gentlemen, we're live. Yeah, dude. Steve-O, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Redman <coughs> in the house. Uh, Steve-O preparing himself for his long stretch in the pokey for <laughs> mocking SeaWorld openly uh, on top of a very dangerous sign. Dude, there's a video of you. You were streaming live while you, you fucked with the SeaWorld sign. Would you write? Well, with, I, I, I had two different ones. I had the highway sign where right. I changed it to say SeaWorld sucks. And then there's the, the one where I climbed up the 150 foot tall crane. <laughs> okay, I think both of them made me shit my pants. <laughs> One of them, we were watching it. Brian and I were watching it, and my toes were curling. <laughs> oh no, wait, like, you were watching it live? Lifting up? Yeah, we were watching it oh, at one dude, point. Were we best, watching man. it live? Uh, no, it was when we were in Sea uh, When you, or I mean, San Diego, and you were doing the sign one. Oh, and right, it was right, when right. You're climbing up the sign, and you kept on. And I falling. kept landing on my head. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. How did you live? <laughs> I don't know, man. That would seem to be a far fall. That one made sense. Far like, fall. <laughs> that was like appropriate. It was right there down in San Diego near SeaWorld. The highway sign said SeaWorld Drive, and I changed it to say SeaWorld Sucks. I like, guess it was appropriate. My crane one was completely fucking idiotic. There is a, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, okay, let me protest SeaWorld at some random construction site. Nowhere fucking near SeaWorld. You know, let me fucking bring an inflatable killer whale, like a toy whale, climb up a 150-foot crane. When you're 150 feet up in the air, nobody, no one's going to be able to see your fucking toy whale. You know, it's so They're dumb. Like, What's that dot? Right, see, yeah. It's steve and a dot. I know, but then nobody could even tell. So I, by the time I get up there, I got 80 firefighters, 18 cops, a helicopter, and a SWAT team. I'm like... Yeah. The problem like, with that stuff is... If something real was going down and they had put all the resources. Oh, tr trust me, I get it. Yeah. That's why I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to jail well, for? Well, I have a 30 day sentence, but I don't think I'll, like, I don't think, I think they automatically cut it in half and then maybe even get out even quicker. Uh, how does that work? Do you... But I, I didn't necessarily have to go to jail at all. Like, I asked my, my lawyer to get me jail time specifically because my fucking crane stunt was so idiotic. Uh, I was like, man, I got to go to jail. That would be the only <laughs> one tiny little part of it that makes any sense at all. <laughs> because, like, if you're trying to make a statement about captivity, right, you know? Right. Put yourself in captivity. Right. That's the whole wow. deal. So I asked for it. and, and um, So you asked for jail. Like, you could have gotten out of jail? I'm sure I could have. I could have done, like, community service, like, uh, you know, whatever. Like, I was like, no, dude, because I'm a fucking attention whore. So, like, I'm like, dude, like, like scrub graffiti that is not a cool story like going to jail that's a headline you know like i'm gonna get fucking i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get <laughs> uh, you know steve was going to jail that's a fucking that's newsworthy that's so ridiculous it's, it's, <laughs> yeah welcome to my world did you say that <laughs> did you say that to the to the judge well no i never even had to go to court because oh, uh wow. you know like they all they all worked it out so um well, they kept postponing my my arraignment and when uh the, when, you know by, by the time that like the prosecutor and my lawyer finally worked out a deal then when the arraignment was back on they said hey we reached a deal and then they closed it all down <sighs> have you wow. been to jail before sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I got i've got the fucking most hilarious criminal record ever dude like What's, uh, what was the first time the first time uh I was like 16 or 17, like going to high school in England and just got nailed with some weed. You whatever. went to jail in another country. Oh, I've been to jail in like five countries. Really? <laughs> What's the scariest Maybe not country? not five, but I've been to Canada, England, America, Sweden. And I'm not counting Mexico because that was more of a catch and release. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like you were fly fishing with no barb. <laughs> <laughs> right. What what happened in in Mexico? Ah, uh, it, it was like I was, uh, you know, like blacking out on special K, you know, like ketamine, and mm -hmm. I was like climbing on this roof, and like I kind of like fell off of it, and 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 uh, I don't know, they just grabbed me and like detained me. Oh, so um, it was not. Like yeah, that. And, and, yeah. I mean, I wasn't like, uh, yeah, but but it was pretty scary. I mean, it was it was legit. When you're in when you're in Mexico, like that that's fuck, you know, fucked up. You can vanish. Yeah. <laughs> people, yeah, like a yeah. lot of people vanished. Right. They I can't know, find I... that El Chapo guy. Mm -hmm. he, They're if, not going to find him. No, apparently they were closing in on him and he fell and broke his leg and he was carried off by his guards. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, apparently they were, they're close. They keep closing in on him. Right, but that's like a, a, a good disappear. Like yeah. for, for that guy, he's psyched to disappear. Most yeah. people disappear in Mexico are totally not <laughs> that's psyched. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah, people vanish in Mexico. Like those students, like the 43 students that were murdered. It's just scary shit. Right. So when you were in Mexico, when you would you sober up in jail? Did you like realize what had happened? No, like uh, I man, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess like uh, it, it all just like kind of worked out. It wasn't it wasn't a big deal, you know. Um, they they let me go, but uh, they just kicked you out. Yeah, in Sweden, I was in like properly in jail for fucking five days, like. Um, for international drug smuggling. What did was, you bring in? Well, what I did, I was videotaping it, and uh, um, I was in Norway, and I, I put a bunch of weed into a condom, and I tied it in a knot and swallowed it. Choked on it. I was like peeking up blood, trying to get it out. Oh like, God! Yeah, it's all Jesus. it's all it's Jesus all on video, Christ, man. It was really, so then I flew from Norway to Sweden so that it would, you know. You hold. put it on video. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And, and, and then like, you put it on the internet. Well, yeah, I mean, later, you know. Later. But, um, so how'd they catch I, swall you? I swallowed it in Norway and got in an airplane to Sweden. So that, so that way I'm crossing international lines, you know, to qualify uh. as an international drug smuggler. Mm. Then when I got to Sweden, you know, I had my, my I was promoting my tour. Every interview, like, they they say, like, oh, yeah, how you doing? And they said, oh, man, I think I might die of intestinal strangulation because I swallowed this big package of drugs and it won't come out, you know, because it took days. It didn't come oh. out for, like, six and a half days. So so, so every, like, like uh, reporter, like, wrote their, their article or whatever it was, and the cops read the newspaper. <laughs> and so then they, like, they, they, uh, they arrested me, like, after I shit it out. And, uh, and they took me to the jail and... and um, you know, like uh, they brought me into the from the jail to the hospital, put me in this like CAT scan machine, which revealed they said a foreign object in my body. I still don't know what what that was, and uh, they kept me in a, a cell for five days, shitting into uh, plastic bags. <laughs> They're fucking digging through my shit. You know? Oh my god! Yeah, and like, uh, and then and then after five days in there, they brought me back to the hospital for another like scan. And it, it showed that, like, the foreign object had only moved, like, three centimeters, like, in my body. And so, like, they were like, oh, fuck it. And they, they just made, had me pay, pay a fine and go. You don't even know what it is? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. They said it was, like, a... Uh, like, Key? No, I, don't, I don't know. They said <laughs> it was, like, sharp and, and I don't know. Like, it was sharp? Yeah, they, I don't. I, I really don't know what it was. Maybe they're even bullshitting. But uh, it might be still in there. It's did been you over ever, ten years. So. Did you ever get yourself looked at again? No, <laughs> I want an update. Where's that, my friend? Yeah, where I, is he? <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't even really care that much. But uh, yeah, Sweden. That was wild, man. And again, I was super psyched because I knew I was on that little scrolling fucking thing on CNN at the bottom. So you, you know? were psyched for that? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I thought I might because okay, now that when they brought me to the station initially. Like, they, they put my backpack on the table, and they reach into it. And like, the first pocket they reach into, the first thing they pulled out was a fucking ecstasy pill. <laughs> like, that, like, with a fucking, like, that it, had an, it had a print, like, an imprint of a smiley face on it, you know? Oh, God. And, and I didn't even remember it being in there. I'm like, fuck, I didn't know that was in there. And then I thought, man, maybe I'll be in Sweden for a while. But it uh, turns out the, the ecstasy wasn't even, like, that... You know, they weren't even that bent out of shape over ecstasy. They're more pissed about weed over there. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. It's just like one of those weird weed, country things. Well, because weed, like, uh, they think it makes you lazy, I think, and they're not cool. Whoa. That's how it is in Asia. What? You know, I think, I think, you know, they're like, you know, this, like, <sighs> if you, that makes you lazy, and, and, and we're not fucking lazy people, and so they, they want to really punish you for that. That really frustrates me, that, that stereotype <laughs> with weed making you lazy. Uh, that that drives me crazy. That is the one that drives me the most nuts. You're, if you're lazy, you're lazy. Weed, <laughs> weed does not make you fucking lazy. It just doesn't. I I'm mean, not lazy. Whatever, I hate, it drives man. me nuts. I, I was never lazy, man, when I was loaded. No. My, my longest time in jail. <laughs> uh, well, you know, like, I, got, I, was, I was in L.A. County jail for five days one time. I got arrested for um, felony obscenity and uh, principled a second-degree battery in Louisiana. Whoa. 
Yeah, because it was like I was doing my own show. What does that mean, principal to? It means that I, 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 I arranged like an assault. <laughs> 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 what the fuck happened? Well, what happened was like I was doing my old show and... Um, you know how part of it was I was chugging out of a tequila bottle like throughout the whole thing and I'd like, you know, whatever. Like, I had the tequila bottle at the edge of the stage and, um, you know, some kid like climbed on the stage and grabbed the bottle and I see th these bouncers come over and just neutralize it, you know, and I'm like, damn, these guys are good. These fucking bouncers are, are pro. So I, I, so I said, who wants to get on this stage and try to run from one side of the stage to the other past the bouncers, you know, it's a British Bulldog. We'll play British Bulldog, and these guys are gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> so this like one kid who was like this bony little skinny little 19 year old kid was like jumping up and down, like pointing at himself. Like he was just so, he wanted it so bad. You know? <laughs> and I couldn't like, I had to pick him. So I picked this kid and he ran, uh, he just ran, you know, I'm videoing it myself. I said, one, two, three, go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kid like runs halfway across the stage and they just grab him. It was totally anticlimactic. And these three like football player, the college football player bouncers, like they just lifted him up like in unison, like over their heads and like just spiked the kid on his head on the stage. Oh no. And he was like twitching and, and like, you know, I don't think there were, the police report said he was bleeding out of an ear or something like, and, uh, and, and, and it was really fucked up. Well, you know? Why did they do that when they knew that he was going to run across? I don't, like, be, I don't know. I never said slam him on his head. You oh, know, I, I'd said that maybe Jesus fuck him up. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. And so like, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, Oh dude, this is such a lawsuit. Like this is, this oh. is bad. You know? So that's so you know, funny. You're not, thinking oh my god this poor kid's dying <laughs> well, thinking, that too. Uh, legal fees <laughs> right that that too but like whatever it was it was just all bad you know it was all bad in, in in my head like the mantra the show must go on like pretend it's not bad and just continue so i'm like i i, I was like oh, I fuck on the video and somebody in the crowd was was uh had a home video camera rolling on i mean this was like what was it 2002 so, like, I mean, this is before they had cameras on cell phones. And someone's got, like, a fucking, like, VHS home video camera. And um, on, on the tape, which they turned over, they were like, that's a crime. So they turned it over to the cops. Or, or they just gave it to the new newspaper, and the newspaper gave it to the cops. So on the thing, I'm like, that kid's being loaded into an ambulance. Fucking, who wants to play another round of British Bulldog? Oh, no. <laughs> I know it was bad. Did anybody sign up for round two? Uh, I can't remember. I, I can't. I can't remember if we if we did or not. But but uh, that yeah, doesn't it was, seem it like was, assault, though. Honestly, well, it, they, it was principal to second degree battery, so mm. or whatever. I think that's how. If I, I think I have it right, and, and like they, you know, like that was a crime. But but like the people like you know that watch this video. They really were upset with with Stevo, and so there was another point in the video where I stayed, I used an industrial staple gun to staple my ball sack to my leg. Oh, and, you know, normal shit, <laughs> <laughs> right? And uh, so I've got, and I'm covered in blood too, like because like part of the other part of the show, I'd break a light bulb over my head and like pick up like a piece of the broken glass and like like literally slash my tongue because the tongue like bleeds so much and it heals really fast, so I just bleed all over myself and smear blood everywhere. <laughs> and and so I'm covered in blood and I've I've, I've got my my dick and balls just blatantly out and I'm holding the industrial staple gun getting ready to staple my ball sack to my leg and I say this is not art this is just to be offensive <laughs> and I staple my balls to my leg and so like you know being that it was Louisiana in one of these parishes they they deemed that felony obscenity. Mm. Which was a saving grace, man, because like because the story on that one was like Steve-O got arrested for stapling his balls to his leg, you know? Like the thing with the kid didn't really play that much in the media, you know? Oh, <laughs> you get a, get he did PR sue me move. though. He did, did sue me, yeah, for like brain damage. I, mean, I don't think he even had brain damage. Well, but, uh, I, I'll tell you right now, he had brain damage. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, you get spiked on your head, some cells die. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Oh, a hundred percent. Right. hundred percent. But yeah, no, I, I, like uh, I, I got I got properly sued. <laughs> you know? So did you go to did you lose or did you go to court? Well, or? I mean it was dead settled. You, you know, settled. We, we settled it. Yeah. Can you say how much? 
Um, he got fifty grand. <laughs> that's that's, a, that's not that good. But you know, like you, you know, <laughs> got a tank. I think that that's what it was. It it's wasn't. So, did you talk to the or maybe bouncers? fifty grand was my legal fees? I can't remember. I did know. you talk to the bouncers? You go. Why did you spike him on his head? Why didn't you just grab him? Like you just grabbed him. I know. Grabbing uh, him would have been funny. You know, right? Just grab and take him out of there. Help! You know, to hold him over right, their or head. Throw him into the audience like a stage diver. Yeah, something. yeah. They I mean, really, really. It was upsetting. They shouldn't yeah. have done that. See, the problem is, you give people a green light like that. Right. Like, you've seen some shit the bouncers have done to people when people climb onto that stage. There's a green light. I mean, it's, right. it's like. It's sort of like the cop thing, you know, like when, when cops, like, did you see that video, recent video of the cop grabbing the schoolgirl? She's in her desk, she won't get out of her desk, and he just fucking ragdolls her and slams her in the desk on the ground. It's when cops have the green light, when they can do whatever they want to do, then you're leaving it up to the discretion of this guy that's probably not thinking that straight. Right. A little stressed out. Yeah, I got sure. beat up by a few bouncers. One guy uh, I just, uh, grabbed me, took me out back, and just like pushed me against the wall and just kept on slapping me in the face and wouldn't let me go. And he like sat there for like 10, I was like 18, and he's just like wailing on my face. Then he'll be like, you, you gonna do that again, motherfucker? And then just like punch me in. I felt like I was captured. Like if yeah, I was, it's like, kidnapping. It, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of kidnapping right. and assault, really. Yeah, because I was outside of the club. <laughs> he was just ramming me against the wall and they're, shit. Like They're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we left that club in Louisiana that night. I knew I was going to hear about it again. And, um, and sure enough, like it, it took a couple weeks, but um, you know, I was like sleeping off a cocaine bender, and, and uh, my roommate comes in and he says, uh, hey, man, you really got to get up for this. And there's like the L.A. <laughs> the LA fugitive division. They had, it, like, they, they had a... a a fugitive warrant out of Louisiana that, uh, with um, for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, there's a the um, there are two two charges: the felony obscenity, and then the the second second degree battery thing. L. A. should just let that felony obscenity I know, slide. But, the, but the they should thing, be like, you keep that yourself, I, you fucking goofy <laughs> yeah, redneck right. douchebag. Yeah, but you know the the thing. No, I loved that charge, and the thing was <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> charge, <laughs> right? But the thing was that like they 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 gave me a uh, one hundred and twenty thousand dollar bail. Like a warrant for uh, for the the battery, wow. and then for the felony obscenity, they gave me a million. Oh so my I got, god! I, the, so I showed up on the the like the fugitive list, like in like pole position number one with one point twelve million dollar bail. Oh my god! Yeah, and so they arrested pole position number one. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a fucking NASCAR race. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> And uh, and and so like they 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 brought me in. They're like, "What'd you do?" And I'm like, "I stapled my balls to my leg." You know, like that nobody could understand it. <laughs> and I and I was in L.A. County Jail in the protective custody where I'll be starting on December 9th. They're gonna put you in protective custody? Well, yeah. I mean, like I'm I'm like a kind of high profile dude. Any like you you would be in protective custody too. And uh, you know, they, I mean, I, I, at the time it was 2002. I just got my back tattoo, but the movie wasn't out yet, so nobody knew about it. And the cops like were pretty psyched to have me in there, and they they brought me into like their their office, whatever. Like, and they're giving me like boxes and boxes of cookies and taking <laughs> pictures with my back tattoo. And they're like, I remember they were they were like, "Oh, dude, you'll be fine in here, man." What you is know? the back tattoo that they were taking pictures? Uh, the my self portrait. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, right? yeah, great. I've seen it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, they um, and they were like, "Oh, you'll be fine in here, man. This is Robert Downey Jr. block, you know. Like, uh, we've had they, they're listing up all the celebrities that 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 have been in there." Yeah, like Tommy Lee, like everybody in the they're like, and, and ODB is always in here. You're actually in his cell. Oh, <laughs> ODB. I yeah. miss that dude. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> uh, this, that was a good one. Um, the longest I was in jail was 10 days in Orlando for, uh, that, was, that was for drunk driving. Now that's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, that, that was fucked up. And I remember like that was in 1996. And, um, I mean, I, I hadn't really broken out yet, you know, <laughs> so, uh, like I, I couldn't really like afford, I mean, I barely could afford, um, to get to Orlando. Like I lived in South Florida, like near West Palm beach. And so I could, I had to scrape money together for a, uh, for a, a Greyhound bus to get to Orlando. And I was like, I can't afford, I can, I can afford to get there once. 
for my arraignment. I can't afford to like go get arraigned and then set a date and then come back and then come back again. And my, my, uh, I had a public defender. The public defender said, yeah, I saw the video. We're not going to be able to do much about this. You know, that was the one where my arrest report said, uh, defendant declined roadside sobriety tests stating he would prefer to take a nap. Because <laughs> I, I was trying to argue, I was trying to argue that I wasn't actually drunk. I was just really tired. <laughs> you know? oh. uh, and uh, so so I just told the the public the public defender guy, I was like, Man, um I can't afford to like go home and come back again. So like at the arraignment, can we just like plead guilty and like ask that I go to jail like right away? <laughs> so, that, so, so that's what we that's what we did, and I actually did the whole ten days. So, what is uh, what's worse, Mexico or Orlando, as far as jail? Um, well, the the Mexico was just like holding, you know, like Orlando was like proper, like proper jail, like like process, and it was pretty mellow because like. In Orlando, they said, like, uh, you know, as you get, like, you know, process, you get process, you get, you get like, orientation, you know, they kind of break down what it's going to be like. They, they give you a tub of, like, a, like a Tupperware tub of, like, your belongings where you've got, like, whatever, like, your, you know, blanket, like, a soap, like, you know, they won't let you have a razor, but, like, a toothbrush. Um, and they're like, these are your, th this is your, your belongings. Okay. Like you're, you're going to have it at the foot of your bed. You're going to keep it like this and like fucking don't piss us off. Don't do anything wrong because if you hear pack up your belongings, <laughs> you know, then what that means is, uh, then you, you're going to pack all your shit into your tub and you're going into the fucking dungeon, you know? And the, what that means, like, uh, is that like it, if you're in the dungeon, then down there they're like, and there's just not, there's you're just not on camera down there. Like anything can happen to you. Like and, and like uh, you know that was like sort of the the incentive to like be on your best behavior, you know, because up here like everything's on camera. Like you can you know, and it was just like you don't want to you don't so want to go to the dungeon. They're just letting you know that if you we bring if you, you downstairs, if you, if we're going to abuse you. If you fuck up, if you fuck up, you're going down, and bad shit's going to happen to you because you're going to be because only people go down to the dungeon. Are like like dangerous people that you don't want to be f f like uh, fucking with. <laughs> you know, so like, they're gonna be with you in the right, dungeon. And, and, so and that's the, the, the that yeah yeah basically like basically like the 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 worst people who are more inclined to hurt you are in the dungeon and, and like, no cameras. And, yeah, if, if I remember, because I, I remember like being like always on camera no matter what happened. I don't know if it was no cameras, but they're just like we're not gonna like down there. Nothing can nothing's gonna be nothing nothing gets stopped. Like you're gonna get fucked. You're gonna. You're gonna be fucked and then it worked it kept like everything pretty like civil you know like so I, I was I was uh you know, very well behaved <laughs> now when you're in jail for 10 days is it easy like in 10 days can you get drugs in 10 days um, or do you have to like get to know the system I, get to I, know? I, I don't I, I don't think that you're gonna have as much luck in county jail like like county jail by definition means that you have a, a sentence of, of less than one year and then at, at the point of, a, of it being one year, then it's called prison. And in prison, I think it's like that's where you, you can get whatever you want and, and all that. Like, really? Uh, yeah. I, I don't think LA, I, I, I don't think like jail is, is as, uh, you know. Probably make hooch is probably the big thing. Right. I mean, and, and maybe like, like I even, I, I don't have that much experience, so I don't know. But like, I couldn't get, uh, yeah, you know, I, I was doing like backflips for extra food and shit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like you know? when people give you food, like the people that work there, like, or the people uh, that other inmates, uh, the, the, the people that work there. You know, when they had the cart that, that came by, and um, and I remember too, like there was like uh, in in Orlando. It's like the jail's a big business in Orlando because it's kind of like Mecca, you know, like maybe even more than Mecca, like more families like travel from all over the world to, it's like the biggest like tourist thing. So like the business is like, they say like you come to Orlando on vacation, you leave on probation and then you return on violation. You know? <laughs> And, uh, and well, they so that have was all like the theme parks there, right? They have yeah, Disneyland. Uh, they have there's a bunch of them. 
Is SeaWorld there too? They got SeaWorld in Orlando, Orlando and what? San Antonio. When are they San closing Diego. SeaWorld down? Because in in California, they just made it illegal for them to breed right. in captivity. Dude, now. they fucking made they 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 banned captive breeding. Mm-hmm. At, in, in the California banned captive breeding, which means that it only applies to the San Diego SeaWorld. But that fucking uh, came down. Whatever that decision was was made official. Like, within two days of me getting my jail sentence. That's amazing. And I like to think, man, maybe it's such a coincidence, but I like to think that I got people sort of talking about it, you know, like, like in the, you know, thinking about it, and then they were like, you know what, fuck those people. Well, you, know? you definitely did. You, you definitely put some attention on it, but there's been some attention on it for quite well, a while. Of course. And of that course. movie Blackfish was the of big course. one. That was for the big sure. one. That woke up a lot of people when they, they just realized, like, whoa, well, what, it, what, it, what is this place? It killed SeaWorld for me forever. I, I I used to love it going as a kid. You know? I was always telling you, like you're you're going to watch prisoners, you're going to watch slaves. I know, you know? It's, it's super fucked, dude. And, it's super fucked. They're yeah. they're like water people. I mean, they really are like as smart as human beings. Oh, they dude, just don't affect I, I their think environment. Smarter too, because like just their their loyalty and and shit like that. Like humans aren't that loyal. Well, you could say that, but some humans are, and dolphins right. kill a lot of babies. Right. You know, like they're, they're, they kill baby dolphins, they rape a lot. They're, they're not the best. Right. I mean, there's, yeah, there's dolphins like, are dicks, but not whales. Well, even killer whales. <laughs> killer whales kill dolphins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and whales. They, they eat whales alive. Like, it's a hard fucking world in the ocean. The, world, the ocean's a dog eat dog world, or a dolphin eat baby world, or and a whale, killer whale eat whale. One thing for sure, world. though, there has never been an instance of a killer whale. You know, people would like to call them orcas. That an orca's never attacked a human in the wild. That's true. When we were filming Wild Boys, we went to Alaska and we we like ran across a pod of uh, of of orcas, and um, we had Manny, the crazy shark guy, you know, like the Tarzan looking dude that rides sharks everywhere, and he was so jazzed. He sees these killing these fucking killer whales in the wild. He's like, like just dives in to go swim with them, you know, and like. Uh, and we we had we had an inflatable killer whale there too, and like we we towed Pontius like on it, you know, like try to like right through it. But you couldn't you swim towards these orcas, and and they're out, man. They they won't they don't even want to hang with you. Yeah, they but they have saved people. They've saved drowning people before. Oh yeah. Yeah, they've uh, people capsized boats. They've actually like lifted them up and helped them. Yeah, they're they're man. very smart. They say that they have dialects. They have like uh-huh. you can tell their different accents. They 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 recognize each other. They stay with the same family for life. That's why it's so fucked up when they take them away. Like you're right. stealing someone away, like a child away from their mother. Yep. It's so fucking dark. And when you see those SeaWorld commercials, they're like, we haven't taken orcas from the wild in over 34 years. Like, <clears throat> that's the, you imagine if there was a commercial for, like, Nabisco, <laughs> and Nabisco was like, we haven't stolen slaves in over 34 years. The slaves right. that we have, we have had them for a long time. Right. That's basically what they're saying. I know. It's fucked up, dude. I it's, gr- it, Go ahead. I grew up with a SeaWorld in Ohio, and it's really weird how, you, you know, growing up, they don't teach you that, like, hey, we captured these guys. It, you always kind of thought, like, oh, they're injured, and we, we helped them, and that's why they're here. It was always kind of like, oh, I like SeaWorld because I like I, I want to see these dolphins do good and, and be better. But, you, you know, after <laughs> but, but after watching that movie, you realize, you know, it's the exact opposite. They just kind of, right. Know, it's them. slavery. Yeah, they say a dolphin has a cerebral cortex that's forty percent larger than a human being's. I believe it. Yeah, they don't. I mean, they don't have the ability to alter their environment. They can't pick things up and move them around. They can't send emails, but they don't have to. They live in a three D world. Like they can fly around in their world. I mean, they come up for air, but in their world, they can go left, right, up, down. They they don't need fingers. Like it's not necessary. So our idea, like what's intelligence? Like if you can't type something, or if you can't build a house, you're a fucking idiot. You know, that's how we look at it. But just but but those things that we define as intelligent when it comes to human beings are completely unnecessary. They go where the water's warm. The fish are everywhere. Fish are stupid as fuck. They swim up to them. They jack them. Dolphins probably never starve to death. I mean, they're faster than fish. I mean, I guess they die of old age. But you you got to think like, if unless they run out of fish, 
Fish are probably easy as fuck for them to catch. They just swim up and jack them. It's like food is floating around the sky. Imagine if everywhere you went, like there's sandwiches just <laughs> floating around in front of you. And you right. just hang out with your homies and grab a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's right dolphin waves world. And shit. Yeah, that's dolphin world. But they do they do do some dark shit. But they usually do it in the name of breeding. That's why female dolphins are like super slutty. They're super slutty because they want to have because the male they can't recognize lines of paternity, so they they don't necessarily know whether or not the baby's theirs. So if they f go up to a chick and she's got babies and they have never had sex with her, the women, the female dolphins, won't have sex until their baby has reached like maturity, until their baby can swim away. It's like a, f a few years, I believe. So when the males come up to females and they have babies and they haven't had sex with the male, with the female, they'll sometimes kill the babies so that she'll have sex with them again. Ah. It's pretty fucked up. Lions do shit like that, too. Bears right? do shit like that, too. Yeah. yeah. That's the other thing, that video with you and the lion. The that's lion another in the one tree. that made me fucking freak out. <laughs> we, oh we've watched that God. a few times on yeah. this show and freaked. Yeah. But in any case, I'm going to jail for fucking good cause, man. I used to get arrested for fucked up shit, man. You know, like drugs and violence. Like then in Canada, I got arrested. For violence? Uh, what kind of, yeah. What'd you do? <laughs> it, was, it was assault. Like, um... And, I, and we actually ran away from cops and, and got away. It was on New Year's Eve of, of when uh, 2003. I want to say it was uh, uh, it was 2003 turning into 2004. Did this big show, and some fucking asshole got on stage and like snuck up, like whatever, and like sucker punched me while I was on stage. You know, like. Uh, he fucking punched me, and, and so of course everybody like grabs him and starts beating the shit out of him, and and uh, and I'm like and, and I'm like you know on the microphone saying fucking kick his ass, you know like <laughs> you know trying to like tell him it started out as an assault on me, but by the time I was like no nah, kick his ass and and they're beating him just all bloody, <laughs> you know like uh, and, and Preston Lacey, the big guy on Jackass, had his microphone. He was just like grating the dude's forehead off with the microphone, <laughs> oh, like so. He's kind of bloody from that. And then they like they, they carried him, uh, you know. They carried, then they were carrying him away, and I like hauled off and kicked the guy, you know. And so like you got in trouble for that. I did. Yeah, the the, the cops co were called, and um, we just I think maybe like ran off the stage and just dipped, you know, like and got away. But then I, I was back. Um, you know, on, on you know my new tour in uh, fucking, I was in is in Calgary, and and I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the, uh, the morning news promoting my shows. And they said, Have you ever been to Calgary before? I said, Oh yeah, like uh, I was I was here, and and we really beat the crap out of this guy, and then we ran from cops and got oh. away. <laughs> they still let you in Canada? <laughs> well, I'm Canadian. I have a Canadian uh. passport. Yeah, I'm also American and I'm also British. But uh, what? I, yeah, my mom was born in Canada. My dad was born in America. I was born in England. So I'm all three. Well, you, oh, so wow. all you have to do is be born in a country like that, and you get You're a passport. Citizen. You're a citizen. Yeah. But then they allow you to be a citizen of America too. Correct. Yeah. Dude, you can't that's be. A, you can't sweet be. Deal. Yeah. You can't be a resident of more than one place. Right. But, but you, you can, can be a citizen. And all I gotta do is marry like a Australian chick, and I'm stoked. Even New Zealand would be even better. And so then you're before. like quadra, <laughs> right? <laughs> quadra yeah. citizen. But I'm triple national. The thing was though, like, I'm, so I'm bragging about like, yeah, we beat up this guy and fucking ran from the cops. And then when I left from that trip, hand over the passport like uh, to the immigration guy, like you know, going through the airport. He's like, yeah. Um, go ahead and wait in this room. <laughs> and so that was the a red flag. Yeah, so the cops uh, came and arrested me, and, and they, I, I was in. I mean, they held me for like twelve hours or ten hours or something. And what they say when they arrested you? They said there's a you have an outstanding warrant, which I think is pretty funny. It's like an outstanding warrant. Yeah, but yeah. How, outstanding. <laughs> this is a good one. So that's not, I think there's other meanings for outstanding. Right. So right. why'd they let you go after twelve hours? Um, because I paid bail. Like uh ten thousand dollar bail or that's something. That's it? Did yeah. you have to go back and go to court? I mean it was a misdemeanor, you know, whatever. Like I uh, I got it sorted out from um you know, like whatever. Canada doesn't play when it comes to assault, though. Like if you've been Canada in, doesn't in a play street when it comes fight. to anything, man. Yeah. Like uh, Canada is the fucking toughest country to get into. I mean, like everybody gets held up. If you got a drunk driving arrest, they like you're not allowed you. in. Yeah. Um, I, 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 like uh, assault, I don't, I don't know if there was that big of a deal, but uh, but whatever. You know, it was great because I was able to sort of, you know, like 
clear away the wreckage of my past. Like for all the fucked up shit I've done, like I like to think I've made it all right, you know. <laughs> How about the dude that got spiked on his fucking head? Um, he, he's fine, dude. He's got like, 50 uh, grand, man. <laughs> that guy, special K through that 50 grand the first day. That's a, it's, it's a weird thing, like the, the Canadian thing. Like, um, they live right next door to us. So they right. got to be real careful about, like, fugitives sneaking across the border. So they're super strict about any weirdness. Like, Eddie Bravo a long time ago got pulled over not even arrested for having a legal he, he used to work for a check cashing company so he used to take these bags of cash around with them and he had a concealed weapons permit and so he gets pulled over by the cops and he tells the cops uh, officer I work for a check cashing company I have a large sum of cash and I also have a, uh, a concealed weapon and uh, here's here's my permits here my paperwork and so they take him out of the car they handcuff him check his paperwork they go everything seems in order you're free to go and they let him go so every time he goes to canada they bring up that wow. every time still on his record mm -hmm. somehow still on his record still on his record it wasn't even an arrest he pulled they pulled him over wow. they checked <clears> but <throat> it, when it involves a gun if it involves anything where you large like, amounts of cash everybody's mm -hmm. pretty uptight about but it was it was all legit it was he worked for a check cashing company so he yeah. had a total 100 percent ironclad ex excuse they let him out I mean, he never brought him to jail. They, they let him go. Yeah. But still, every time he goes to Canada, they check him. Is Kevin this... James had a real hard time because Kevin James got in a street fight, like in like high school or college or something like that, and got arrested. No conviction, no, nothing. But every time he would go to Canada, like when before he was right. famous, we'd do the Montreal Comedy yeah. Festival together. Every time we'd go to Canada, they'd fuck with him. You know, Australia is the same way, man. Mm -hmm. Australia is... Um like maybe even harder to get into than Canada and like and uh, I'm not Australian so when I when I go to Australia I have to um f like fulfill like a, with my visa application I have to submit my entire criminal record like my whole history and it's like so long it's hilarious like uh you know I mean there's even a, a bunch of stuff I didn't even mention like you know like getting arrested all over the states and stuff but nothing was really how many times have you been arrested uh there's one in uh, in Philadelphia, like public urination yeah. was like, I mean, kind of mellow. It was more like funny than anything. Um, and uh, yeah, there's my first drunk driving. You should and have like those like four lines <laughs> and a stripe yeah. for five every time <laughs> right, you get right, arrested, right. like counting off the days in prison. When, when <laughs> I, like like uh, last great. year... Uh, like, you know, like a year and a half ago or something, I did a whole Australia tour. And, um, you know, I was, I was like, a, putting it all together. And I made like a YouTube video, like, like actually going through my whole like official thing, like with all the paperwork, you know, my criminal, my, my criminal past or whatever. And at the same time too, um, uh, the, uh, um, the, the Australian tour promoter wanted um, me to have a, a name for my tour, you know, like, oh, we'd like to have, you know, a name for the tour. And so I'm going through my whole you know, arrest history. And so I told him, yeah, man, it's Steve-O guilty as charged. His name, <laughs> the name of my tour, you know, and so that's been the name of my tour for like a year and a half. You know, like if anybody wants to know the name of it, that's what it is every time. And now, and, and the, why I'm so excited to be here today is because uh, in like less than three weeks in Austin, Texas, I'm taping my first sh uh, comedy special for Showtime. And it's, of course, called Steve-O Guilty as Charged. Where are you taping it? Uh, at the Paramount Theater in Austin, Texas. Oh, that's a good spot. I've been there. Oh, dude, it's so, it's so fucking... I mean, I just love Texas, man. I love I, like, Texas. I love Texas so much, and it's the one place that I haven't been to with the, with the, with this tour. So it's like, I feel oh, like I have a fresh, fresh crowd, you know? And um, What dude, are you I'm, doing on tour? Are you doing straight stand-up? Are you doing... It, it's, it's like a one-man show where, like, uh, it, it's totally stand-up. It's totally stories, and like on story points throughout the show like i do like f super fucked up stunts you know like, like what like uh I, I mean when when i come in like i'm going to like blast fucking uh like a 12 pack of soda cans on my head you know like until they're all like 
busted it open. What? Yeah. I, like, wait, wait, I'll break how it. Do you I'll do break. I'll, like you just take the can and it's not open, and you just fucking keep smashing it in your head until oh, until dude. it breaks. <laughs> you know? and, and it's so it's gonna be so dope with all the lights, you know, like all the lights, and when once once it breaks, it's like spraying like super fucking a lot, you know, and so mm -hmm. like it looked dope, man. I'll break like at least six of them, and. Uh, and then um, whatever, like you know, I'll, you I'll, look so healthy for someone who's done so much <laughs> well, fucked thanks, up shit man. to your body. Like I, you walk normal, yeah. You, you seem to be your voice a little raspy, but everything's right. coming out good. Well, the thanks, words man. come out smooth. I, I appreciate it, dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, then like uh, wh whatever, I, I, you know, at, at the top of my show, I like uh, you know, I, I got some crowd work and stuff. Like, um, and, and I don't even waste any time before I start fucking bagging on Carlos Mencia. <laughs> yeah. And your crowd work. Well, yeah, because like all I pulled out, like one of my my big like, bits is, you know, like I'll pull the the crowd about, um, you know, ladies clap if you've ever received a dick pic from someone, you know. And it's like really like you know, it, it just it's like one of my like you know best like uh, crowd work bits. And um, you know, after I get done like with all like the back and forth with you know, it's just really fucking funny to pull like. You know, now, like, what kind of dick pics did you get, like, from guys that you weren't hooking up with? You know, like, now clap if you got a dick pic from a guy that you were not hooking up with at all. And, like, like less, but still a ton of chicks clapping. Okay, now I want you to clap really loud if you went on to have sex with that guy. <laughs> Just crickets, you know? <laughs> I'm like, so it doesn't work, you know? And then I have to, I tell him, like, you know, and I just saw this thing recently, and so I just started doing it. Like, um, let's say, uh, you know, I saw this funny thing online about dick pics, and it was so funny, I stole it. You know, it was one of these memes where a, a girl is saying, receiving a dick pic from a guy is just like her cat bringing her a dead mouse. She says, <laughs> she says I can see that you are very proud, <laughs> but I'm not touching it. <laughs> right. And That's like, hilarious. <laughs> That's and, fucking funny. And, so, and people will like actually clap, yeah. you know? And I say, and I say like every time I'm like, oh my God, I can't I fucking I like this floors me getting applause for a joke. I told you I stole. <laughs> I said, I fucking love this so much. I decided I'm going to do a whole thing fucking bit just out of jokes I stole I call it the Carlos Mencia bit yes. <laughs> and so then I just say really quick because I don't like to fucking I don't even I'm not even comfortable doing this but I'm like I'll tell you two jokes one you've heard of one you haven't but I stole them both <laughs> <laughs> Did you, I, see, I, did you hear what Greg Fitzsimmons I mean, is doing? Yeah. I don't want to ruin it. I want people to come to Austin yeah. so much because, like, normally I do comedy clubs, you know? And, uh -huh. like, I sell the lion's share of my tickets, like, uh, once I get there. You know, I don't do a lot of advanced ticket sales. I show up and I get on the radio and people are like, oh, he's here. And then I do great, you know? Like, I, I do really well. But in this case, for and it's November 21st, this month, um, at the Paramount Theater in Austin. Like, I don't have the luxury of waiting to get there to fucking sell tickets because it's mm -hmm. a fucking Showtime comedy special. You right, know? Like, right, we have right. to have that place sold the fuck out. What's the date? November 21st. Dude, we'll tweet the shit out of it. Oh, uh, dude, I'm so stoked, man. Thank you. Yeah, November 21st, Paramount Theater. You can like find it at stevo.com. We'll tweet it. We'll tweet it. We'll tweet it after this show is over. Yeah, dude. And, super. Uh, and I know like a million people are listening. Can we put right it in now. the YouTube notes that he'll be there? Okay, we'll put it in the YouTube uh, notes dude, of the show. Super too. appreciate it. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Gonna it's gonna be a bunch of people wanting to see you smash soda cans oh, on your head. Oh, dude, you better! I used to do it like <laughs> I used to do it like on in comedy clubs, like six times a week. Oh my god! You know, god. I would break like you know, like like one, two, or three. And uh, but the thing waitresses. is, I would fucking wake up in the morning and I'd fucking like get get out of bed and I'm walking like fucking diagonally, like, you know, <laughs> like I'm like like my whole fucking equilibrium was off, and I was like, I've got to stop hitting myself in the fucking head. But yet you're gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it, but yeah, that's only two shows. <laughs> oh, I see. I was doing it like all the time. So you're doing it like Wednesday, Thursday, two well, no, shows I'm, Friday, I'm doing it, I'm doing two it for shows this... Saturday. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So by the time Sunday Bro, rolled dude, around, fucking... you had brain damage. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Like, but yeah, so in any case, I'll be smashing the cans. I do like the, you know, I've got like a, a couple bits like with the crowd work and then the fucking, you know, by the time, I'll even tell you the jokes. I fucking think they're funny. The, the ones I stole for the Carlos Mencia bit. But if you do that, then the people. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. There's Thank a lot you, of people Joe. Are listening. Don't Thank do you, that. Joe. They listen. They remember. They write shit down. Right. Heard it. <laughs>
<laughs> I heard this one. You right. stole it, and I heard it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Joe. But um, but then uh, like uh, you know after after that, then it's like okay, now I'm gonna really get into it, and so it, it's sort of like uh, I start off. Uh, you know, addressing like how people have asked me for so long, like how did I get into it? How did the jackass shit start? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I, I give like a super condensed, like super hilarious, uh, like sort of fucking Genesis story of, of like you know starting with like me in high school and getting caught and dealing drugs and, and you know like and uh, you know like going to, to college and just fucking up royally. I mean, I fucked up royally at, in college. And, uh, you what know, did you do in college? It was so bad. Well, within two weeks of class starting, my freshman year, I was pl I was on final disciplinary probation, which is fucking impressive. In two weeks? Yeah, I got my room raided. And, and like, uh, you know, they they found all my, my alcohol and weed and shit, and so like, you know, so they 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 relocated me to another fucking dorm, you know, and they're like, you are on final disciplinary probation, and like I. Climbed up like I broke out a window and climbed onto the roof and you know <laughs> there's a radio tower on top of the roof and I climbed up that and someone spotted me from the ground and <sighs> and so the cops came on the roof and they kicked me out of the dorms and uh, I was failing the fuck out of my classes and and then I just got in a van with this dude and and just took off without even withdrawing so <laughs> I got. <laughs> So, so I got uh, I got in a van with this dude. <laughs> <laughs> that never ends well. But, yeah, so I got I, got, I failed out. I got kicked out, and I dropped out. Oh my god! Which I call overachieving. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely badass. a mouthful. I know, and like that's the thing. It's like you know, people were like, when I was leaving the University of Miami, it's like, well, what are you gonna do now? And I'm like, I'm gonna fucking videotape fucked up shit, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. And what year was this? Ninety three. So you had this idea in 93. Oh, yeah. I was, and, and even then, I was like, man, like, I, I had, like, special fucking skills, you know? Like, <laughs> I had, I could, like, I, I was really fucking good at drinking bong water. Oh, <laughs> God. I didn't, oh. Care how, I didn't care how murky it was or whatever. Oh, like, I you know? <laughs> like I think, mud. Very mud. few people have ever said, I, don't, I didn't care how murky it was. <laughs> like, that sentence, if you live a whole life right. and that, that never comes out of your mouth, right. you live a good life. Right. And, and like, I was like, I, I, you know, it was Miami, so I was, like, super into... <laughs> Like I, I would like blow off class and I'd be like practicing jumping on the diving boards at the at the pool, and I'm like I'm never gonna be a diver. But if I jump strictly off of like roofs of like apartment buildings and shit into shallow pools, then it's badass. So I was like I got pretty good at that. Oh my god! And then like my specialty was uh, like setting myself on fire with uh, like hairspray and rubbing alcohol. And so at the point where I'm not even like fucking five minutes into the show at this point and I had to say my specialty was setting myself on fire with hairspray and rubbing alcohol so I'm gonna at that point demonstrate like it's gonna, I'm gonna do you like do that at a uh, in the theater they let you do oh, that? I used to do it in comedy clubs all the time but I kept getting so hurt like I just fucking stopped <laughs> you know like like cause, cause what I do is like I'm gonna do like kind of a deluxe version for this one. Like I'm gonna start with like a can of hairspray. And I'm gonna like spray my like all the hair on my head like heavily with the hairspray. I'm gonna climb on top of a of a table on the stage, and douse my arm with rubbing alcohol. Fill my mouth with lamp oil. Um, and then what about I'm gonna, your butthole? <laughs> anything, no. anything going in there? It's a zip of fluid. No, Kerosene? Then, no, then, then I'm going to click I'm gonna click a lighter and light my arm on fire, like just the rubbing alcohol on my skin. So and my a trail arm, will so go my, all the way up to your hair. Well, like a, a, a drop, will, uh -huh. from, like from when I pour it, like on the table there will be a puddle, and so like a drop will stay on fire probably, and then so the table will be on fire, my arm's on fire, and then like, so I'm going to use my arm as a torch when I do a front flip standing on top of the table. Oh. Right. And simultaneously, as I do the front flip, blow a fireball like off of my arm, like which is like, huge with lamp <laughs> lamp oil it goes crazy. So like the lamp oil, and as I'm flipping for, like the front flip, my head like everything just goes right through the fire. So when I crash on the table on my back, now my head's on fire, and so then I get get up and like kind of like like f flail around the stage with my head on fire, and my buddy comes running out with a mouthful of lamp oil, and he comes running up to me and he uses my head as a torch, and just you know blows a fucking huge fireball off of my head, 
and uh, and then like we'll figure out how to put me out, you know. <laughs> then we'll figure it out. Right, right. I mean, maybe he'll have like a, a towel or something because I've gotten like a towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about a no. fireman? <laughs> no, I mean, like I, I wouldn't do that. I'll, I'll go. I'll, like my goal will be to just use my bare hands. But, does but the, the thing does is, the like I've done it where I know like, that you're gonna do this. Oh no! Oh fuck, dude, don't. Don't tell no, them. Don't tell, don't tell them. Oh, don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, oh my God. I didn't even think about it. Cause I, I mean, I'm like, you didn't whatever. think about it? Well, I mean, it's a fucking you huge just... theater. Like, I thought, I didn't, it, it didn't occur to me that they would First... find out that I was going to do it until I already did it. <laughs> a, a million plus people are going to hear this. <laughs> right, Someone's well, going to tell them. Well, all right. Well, then fucking, I better figure it out. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll call I mean, my agent. I guarantee you, they have uh, fire I've, codes. I, dude, I've I've done I've done it in the fucking thousand places. Like, have you ever uh, let anybody know beforehand on a podcast? I feel like a fucking flashback from Calgary coming. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're, you're, it's like all the times you've hit yourself in the head with sodas. You've knocked out this I used pre planning. To be busy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pre planning s s segment of your brain that's just nah. shorted out like a bad fuse. Nah, dude, we'll figure it out. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll, no worries. Like, uh, maybe we'll have like a bunch of people with with uh, fire extinguishers. Yes, we'll let yes. The you would definitely have a bunch of people with fire we'll, extinguishers. We'll let the we'll let the fucking fire marshal know or whatever, dude. But like, this is so important, man. I have to do it. Aren't you scared that like maybe you get really injured and you can't finish? I mean, uh, like if nah, you burn like, your like face one, off. One or... time I like burned my neck really bad and um, it hurts, but it's not gonna like stop me. You know. Wow. Like half the rest of your show could be you looking, you know, like steam coming off your face and your, your <laughs> lips be the all melted. First time. If it was you, that would be a real problem. <laughs> well, look but if it's him, it's like this right. part of the fun. Yeah. Right. And part like, of the fun is him being all fucked up. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it, whatever. I mean, the, the the crazier the better, you know. Like uh, I'm I'm in this to fucking really make an impression. You're in it to and win. So whatever. Like <laughs> it's it, it's gonna it's gonna go on, and there's just gonna be like it's sort of it's kind of a one man show. But the thing is, like, I it's, it's also like fully stand up, man. I've been on tour doing stand up for five years now. You yeah, know? I remember when you first started doing it. I was like, "That's it," because you you first started doing it like right around the time when you were getting sober, right? Uh, I had been sober for like two years when I really dove into it, and that I, was... I wasn't sober yet when I first started. Oh, you weren't? Yeah, first time I tried it was two thousand six. Oh, okay. So you took a break and then came back. Yeah, to I it. mean, I just dabbled in it. I didn't right, do right, it. Right. I didn't do it heavy until I'd been sober for a couple of years. But that's pretty much what you do now. Pretty much, yeah. Now, is being sober, does that fuck with your ability to do a lot of these crazy stunts? Well, obviously not. You know, I would say that, uh, I mean, if you're, like, sober, like, you know, like, deliberately hurting yourself isn't necessarily easier, but it's, like, I, I never did that because, you know, because I was wasted. I did it because I'm an attention whore, and sober or not, take away the drugs and alcohol, I'm still an attention whore. You know. But you embrace that. Fuck yeah, dude. Why do you think I have a fucking tattoo of myself on my back? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like everybody's favorite topic of conversation is themselves. I'm just like, I think that's hilarious and I'm cool with admitting it, you know. But like, it just seems like if you were fucked up on drugs and you made this career of like getting hammered and, and going out and doing wild, crazy stunts that got you injured and then you cut out the getting fucked up part. Right. But you're still injuring yourself. Well, I mean, injuring myself isn't as, as isn't like, isn't as much of it, you know. I mean, sure, I'll, I'll still do it. I don't care, you know. What's I'm the fine. most injured you've ever gotten? Um, I, I threw myself off of a balcony at the University of Miami um, after I dropped out, and then I came back and just lived there, <laughs> even though I wasn't allowed to. Um, and there was, like, a keg party, and, and I was trying to, like, uh, impressed this fat chick and I was on the balcony like but I had taken too many pills and drank too much booze and I'm telling this girl this was in uh I think it was Jan it was January of nineteen ninety five and I'm telling this girl I said I'm gonna be like a fucking super rad stunt man and we're on this second floor balcony I tell her like you know, like, okay, like, I'm going to be, like, this fucking gnarly stuntman. Like, picture this. Like, imagine, like, like there's, like, a fight on the balcony, right? And, like, I get punched, and I'm, like, pretending I get punched, and I just throw myself off the balcony. Now, I used to throw myself off of balconies all the time, but not when I was that fucked up and not when I was trying to pretend that I had been punched. And so, like, whole, my whole game plan were, like, the way I would do it, I did, did it different. I didn't catch the bottom 
uh, with my hand and then let myself go, I just spun over the railing. And so I spun over the railing. I landed on my fucking face on the bottom. Of it. Uh, and I broke, uh, I broke, I have the CAT scans. They're so gnarly. Like I, I broke my, my cheekbone. Um, I broke seven teeth. I had 10 stitches in my chin, a concussion and a broken wrist. And uh, uh, That's actually pretty good. Considering you fell onto what? Concrete. And I was landing that landed there and I was fucking face down oh from God. where I from where I needed the ten stitches. I had like a, a pool of blood like growing. I was face down in it. I'm not even fucking twitching a finger at all. I mean just like there's just blood pooling, you know, and, and I'm not moving and everyone's like thinks I'm probably dead. But my buddies were like they're like, man, if he's not dead, he's gonna need that weed in his pockets. <laughs> so I, I remember I had like, I had like kind weed, you know, like like fucking proper good weed in one pocket and like swag weed in the other, and and they, uh, you know, pulled it out, pulled it out, and and and, um, and in the morning, I knew my mom was like, I didn't, remember, I don't even remember landing, like I don't remember anything, you know, and they called the ambulance, whatever, and it came, and. Um, and then in the morning, like I woke up and I was so fucked up. It was unbelievable. But I knew my mom was on a cruise ship in like the Caribbean. But I, but I told them, I said, oh, I need to call my mom. And they said, of course. But what I did was I called my buddies down at the University of Miami. I said, hey, I'm going to fucking leave out the fucking emergency room entrance right now come scoop me up and so I, I broke out of the hospital in my in my gown oh right my and they came and picked me up and i went back to the spot and i stood like right over like the pool of blood and i tried to pound a beer but i couldn't because it hurt too bad and i couldn't eat or anything and i was like like my sinuses would like fill with blood and then i would like hawk it you know like you hawk a loogie and i and then spit it out, and it was just blood loogies for like two weeks. I tried to eat applesauce, and I couldn't even fucking eat applesauce because I was so busted up. And so the applesauce, a bowl of applesauce, sat next to my bed just with blood loogies in it. Oh. <laughs> I just used it as a spitter. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, and, so and I had like, I had, a, I broke my wrist too. And so I had um, the cast on my wrist for like whatever you have it on for six weeks. And my mom like sort of felt bad for me because my I broke seven teeth and so my fucking all my front teeth are all busted out. And she knew I was a fuck up, you know. Which teeth? Like uh, it was it was uh, like my my front one of my front ones, and then there was one that didn't break. <laughs> the one on the other side of that one did break, so it looked extra bad. You know? Oh my god! Like right, and um, <laughs> and, and my mom like felt bad for me. She like sort of had like you know she felt bad for me, and you know she's sort of an enabler too. So she set a dentist appointment for me to get my teeth fixed. You know, like, and she's gonna pay for it. And I still got the cast on my wrist. And and the night before the fucking dentist appointment, where I'm gonna get my my teeth fixed is when I get fucking arrested for my first drunk driving, you know? And like, and so they fucking take me into uh, Miami-Dade fucking county jail, and, and I'm in the holding cell there, and, and one of the fucking, like, correctional officers in the jail looks at my fucking cast and says, that cast is a potential weapon. You know, like, cause they, like, uh, like if I get into a fight in the holding cell, now I'm going to have an unfair advantage because I've got this cast on my arm. So they're like, you can't be in this fucking holding cell. You have to go in to this gnarly fucking like, uh, crazy fucking, you know, cell with like all the people who are in here for the longest stretch of time. Oh God. You know, and like they said, the first thing I had to do was go and take a, get naked and take a fucking shower in the back of this big cell with all these bunk beds and all these fucking creepy assholes. And, uh, I'm like, this sucks, man. And I called my mom and I was like, mom, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm in jail, you know? And she's like, she's like, what you know like she, she says I, i'm not bailing you out unless you go door to door straight to rehab and i'm like okay <laughs> so i went to rehab like in 1995 and and um i remember these fucking guys like uh the, one of the counselors says like uh yeah you know like um 95 of all alcoholics like die drunk of 
causes related directly to alcoholism, you know, like most people, like they don't get sober, you know, like, and I'm sitting there thinking, man, this guy's telling me like, if I'd like really wanted to get sober, I got a 5% chance. I'm like, fuck that, you know? <laughs> so, I had, <laughs> so I stayed loaded. Like I just resigned myself to being loaded forever. And, and it wasn't until like 13 years later, I finally so, got it. So him saying that sort kept of like, me fucking wasted. But wow. what it did really, what it, what it did was it just made me not like, uh, get sober until I was really ready. You know, I think and it what made of, you really ready? Well, I mean, fuck, I got, like, Knoxville pulled an intervention on me, and, like, uh... That's when you know you're fucked up. I know, dude. That's Johnny one of my, Knoxville that, steps in and goes, dude, <laughs> that's, that's one of my you're oldest too crazy. Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you got a problem when that's your interventionist, <laughs> you know? Uh, what was going on that he had to step in? Well, I had this, like, fucking mass, mass email thing, and I was, like, broadcasting my downward spiral in, like, fucking real time to, like, you know, 200 of the most, like, you know, influential fucking people in the entertainment industry who's who had the misfortune of giving me their info, you know? And it was just, like, more fucked up, and it just kept getting worse and worse, and... and um, and I got arrested for like uh, you know felony cocaine possession. That was another one of my fucking arrests. <laughs> What's felony cocaine possession? You have a well, certain there's amount? no such thing as misdemeanor cocaine possession. Not I even suppose. like a little bit. <laughs> nah, like you got a little. That's a felony. Yeah. Um, but uh, I got evicted. I got you know arrested. You know, like this is when I had like my my neighbor in this apartment building I lived in was always calling the cops because. I deserved it. <laughs> you know, like he was a lawyer and I'm like an asshole and I'm always making all this noise. So the cops are always coming, but typically they would get to my apartment and they'd be stoked. They'd be like, Oh no way, Steve. Oh, cool, man. Have a good night. And so like they would, <laughs> so they would take off, you know, they would, oh, they would, no. or I would play nights and be like, Oh yeah, I'll keep it. But this guy's just fucking, his life was, was misery because oh, of me. God. But the thing was that like, because I was such a fucking, you know, loaded asshole with all my fucking drugs and fucking being wasted. I, I was just became particularly mad at him for always calling the cops on me. So like, I'd like fucking take like a baseball bat and like pound his door or whatever. Like, fuck you, call the cops. You know, like, oh, uh, no. and, and, uh, and I was like, I was in pound. I was like, you know, I was, I was like pounding on the wall that separated our apartments like all the time. Just like, how do you like that, fucker? You know, how do you like that? And I pounded on the wall so hard that I fucking actually pounded a hole through the wall where I'm looking into his apartment. Wow. You know, and you can uh, see his apartment. You, you yeah, punched through looking, both sides. I punched. Yeah, I was looking oh into it. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, what, I mean, the thing was, walls. well, the thing was that I pounded enough, and then I took a broomstick and fucking just oh. pounded and pounded and pounded. Until I got through, you know. So now he he calls the the cops, and they they actually have to arrest me for for uh, for whatever fucking vandalism, you know. Like it was a misdemeanor, but I've I've now vandalized his property by pounding through the wall. So they come to arrest me, and this time it doesn't matter if they're stoked or whatever. Like you know, and and I'm so blown out on fucking ketamine, and I don't know what's going on, and I got fucking bag of cocaine in my pocket, and like. And, and I'm and I open up the door like I, I've got I'm shirtless I have no shoes on and a bag of cocaine in my pocket and I'm out of my mind and they're like hey we're taking you into jail because we have to arrest you for for uh, vandalism and um, like it's gonna be cold and so I, like as a courtesy like we, you can go in there and put on a shirt and put on some shoes and I'm like fuck a shirt and fuck some shoes <laughs> now, meanwhile that would have been like the perfect opportunity for me to go in, take the bag of cocaine out of my pocket, <laughs> and like put on, you know, like it was a perfect opportunity, but I'm like, fuck that, <laughs> you know? So they take me to jail with no shirt, no shoes, and a fucking, uh, and I get reared, they, they go through your property, you know, when they process you into jail. And so they pull out the bag of cocaine, and they re, <laughs> they, they re-arrest me at the jail. Oh my God. <laughs> so, I'm in, so, so I'm in there for like three days or something, and it's on the news, 
and the, the apartment building's fucking over me, even though I rented four apartments in the building. One Why was, did you rent four? Because one was a skate park. Yeah. <laughs> 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 one was... <laughs> one was a, <laughs> one, <laughs> a skate park. <laughs> one was a skate park. One was like sort of like my 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 buddies. Like my one guy who edited my videos and stuff. It was kind of an office. I had this like assistant chick. It was such a fucking joke. I mean, her job was just to tell people that she couldn't find me and and and, <laughs> and, and constantly uh, change my flights because I would always miss my flights. You know, uh, she was like traveling agent at best but I, but I had an apartment for her and then I had my bachelor pad so it was four and still the fucking apartments like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> when, oh you, when you're renting God. four apartments and then you still get evicted like that's when you know you fucked up well especially when one of them is a skate park yeah. right I know but it was it was like the, it was like ne the, the next to it on one side <laughs> was, was a fucking uh, like Russian hooker operation oh. so they weren't complaining you know, they had dudes coming in to fuck these hookers all, all day long. Where did you live? Uh, Specifically. Right across the street. Yeah, <laughs> Do you get a discount still? Do you know anybody? I, mean, I, I don't know. This, is a, this is a long time ago, but it was right oh. across the street from Rock and Roll Rouse. Oh, right in the midst. Yeah, I mean, right on the part of Sunset Boulevard. That's with, a dangerous with a place to live. Yeah. And the, the lawyers live in there? I He's mean, yeah, probably I mean, shady. He, I, take yeah, a look I at guess, him closer. I, mean, I don't know that I ever actually met him. Like, what? like probably, I mean, yelling like through the door, like whatever, maybe like a son, but I wouldn't have recognized him. Do you feel like you want to go back and apologize to him? I tried. Did I, you? I, I tried. I actually had his email and, um, you know, I, I reached out to him and I said, hey, like, uh, you know, it would mean a lot to me if like we could meet up and, you know. And he just declined, so I had to respect that, you know. But yeah, that was. But he declined in an email. He declined. He declined to to meet me. And yeah. So I just sort of like when when you're in that situation and you want to go through and make things right. Right. You had to respect that, you know. You can't like be persistent. So mm -hmm. the, so to make it right to that guy, like you know, it's called a living amends, where right. it's sort of I'm not going to do that to anybody else. And this is a part <laughs> of thing about rehab. Is this like? A yeah, I mean, it's like I mean, yeah, of course, you know, like I mean, it's basically a thing about life, you mm -hmm. know. But um, but it's something that they ask you to do, like when you're you you're going through rehab. Then well, right, it would be considered step nine of the twelve steps. You know, we we made direct amends wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. So yeah, so that's part of the deal. And now I get I finally get out of jail, and I come back, and there's a fucking eviction notice on my on my door. You know, like get the fuck out within three days. Oh, actually that. There was that, yeah. I got and and like I had all drugs in my apartment. So like I get back and like there's the eviction notice, but like I just go straight for like the vials of ketamine. I had like two or three more vials of ketamine. I cooked them up in the microwave. You know, I I, I went digging through. Cooked them up in the microwave. How do you how do you handle ketamine? Well, you, I mean, it, it's best. I never just like injected shit. I just never got that far. But um, you just cook it in the microwave, and, and it evaporates like the maybe water. I don't know. And it, and you're left with like the uh, the plate. It's like crusted to the plate, and then you scrape it up with like a card. And know? then what do you do with that? Snort it. Snort it. Yeah. Now, how did you how did you get started on ketamine? Because ketamine is like a cat I love that. I love Whoa. that shit, dude. Whoa. I, like, <laughs> like, Whoa. I love, dude. Like, uh, that was my favorite, man. Do you the know first Neil time I, First time I tried it, I don't think so. Neil Brennan, uh, he's a co-creator of The Chappelle Show, stand-up comic, oh, funny okay. guy. He's been taking ketamine treatments for depression. Oh my god! Like it's one of the more so recent. Jealous. One of the more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the more recent treatments for depression. Why? That they've been well because it resets the way you any intense psychedelic experience and ketamine, even though it's a tranquilizer, is thought it's of as a pretty intense super psychedelic. Super dissociative. It's basically yeah. pharmaceutical PCP. Really? That's how you look at it? <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's what it is, man, really. But did you have, like, out-of-body experiences or any experiences where you felt like you went into another dimension and trip, sure. you know, the K-hole experience? Um, some of the experiences I had with ketamine, like, um, pers like uh, uh, what you, depth perception, like, mm -hmm. way fucking distorted. Like, like, some fear and loathing shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not, like, you know about it. Like, I've been, I remember, like, like... My fucking feet are like thirty feet away. <laughs> like, it was fucked up. I remember one time I was in a, in a in a hotel room in London, just with, like with with just way too much of the shit, and like and at one point the whole hotel room just started free falling, 
I mean, I'm from like, the sky. Well, not the, uh, like like looking up, like rather than like like I could actually see like a uh, like kind of an elevator shaft type deal that it was falling through. You know, like it was just the, the hotel room started free falling, and wow. I'm like just thinking, whoa! And I remember being so stoked. I was thinking, I remember thinking, Jim Morrison doesn't have shit on me. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm so good at being a drug addict, you know, <laughs> like uh, or whatever, you know. But um, so yeah, I'm cooking up the ketamine and whatever, and I pack. It, is it come? But does it come in a liquid form? It comes initially? in a vial. So it's like initially the kind of a liquid. vial where you would stick a, a needle and it's shoot into, yeah. into a cat. Usually, sure, it's like cat tranquilizer. Horse. Horse. I think horse, horse as much. Yeah, yeah? horse. Uh huh. I mean, PCP started out as an anesthetic. Hmm. Like uh, that was the the idea for it. But yeah, within like two hours of being of, of walking out of jail. I, I have my buddy videotaping me. I'm, I'm jumping up and down on the roof of a parked car, screaming, God is the sun. <laughs> Whatever that means, you know? <laughs> like, and like, and like this. Like, <laughs> and you're so and, profound. <laughs> and like, I've got it figured out, man. Where's the sun? You fucking need the sun for plants, dude. <laughs> like, and, and and like this squad of like security guards like comes over and like, you know, like what's going on, you know, like, I mean, it's amazing that I didn't go right back into jail for another, I have pockets full of drugs, you know, and so then, but I mean, and I did, that bender lasted for, I don't know, like maybe 24 hours and now I'm, I've got, you know, my three days is, is like you know, I've got one more day. I got to be out of the apartment. So I send the mass email list. I, I say, hey, you know, like and with all the jackass guys on it. But of course, two hundred like high power people in Hollywood need to know this. That like, hey, Knoxville and guys, you know, I've, I I I got to be out of my apartment tomorrow, and I'm not fucking leaving my apartment. Um, I don't want to fucking leave here until I jump out of my bedroom window, you know, which will be like a twenty five foot drop onto the sidewalk and I need you guys to to bring something for me to land on, preferably a hot tub. <laughs> I wanted to like put a hot tub like and, and cannonball into it out of my bedroom window and and uh in my sliding glass door in the living room, I could pull it open and I wanted to put a like a ramp in the living room and ride a motorcycle like off the ramp through the sliding glass door and jump onto the roof of the Could you building. imagine if you owned an apartment building <laughs> Jesus. and this motherfucker yeah, rents we, a, a spot Knoxville there? Knoxville makes fun of me about the, what the, the sliding glass door then because he's like just like a three foot gap to the building next door. Like that part was a gimme. You know? But uh, so I said like Knox, I said you guys come over bring a fucking camera This is we're gonna fucking start filming like Jackass 3 and like uh, you know get over here come on man before I leave we're gonna do my eviction party stuff stunts and uh and, and so basically i scheduled my own intervention <laughs> you know knoxville reached out to dr drew who was on the list the email list he's like hey dude steve was like about to die and dr drew said yeah you're right you know he said get over there and fucking if you got to tie him up put him in the trunk like uh and take him to the hospital oh and that the other part i said if you don't bring anything for me to land on i'm fucking jumping anyway i promise i'm ready to die so they printed that up it was like a, me threatening my own life which qualified me for the 5150 law where you can lock someone into a psychiatric ward wow so they came over to, to for my intervention and and like they're like we're, it wasn't like the kind of intervention where like where they ask if you're willing to accept help you know it's like, like we're taking you to the psych ward. This is what's going to happen. If you don't like it, we're going to kick your ass and take you anyway. So they take me to the psych ward for the, the 72-hour hold, which is like, you know, everybody's been on that. You know, <laughs> you know like Britney Spears or like, you know, the whole deal. But the thing was, when we got there, I was like spitting on people. I was just like not fucking cool. And like I was trying to like throw shit around and. You know, like I like when I, I remember because when I thought I was gonna like calmly explain that it was a misunderstanding and be out of there, but like what happened was, I, I they had the, the emails printed out where I'm like saying I'm ready to die and you know and so like they had me I wasn't talking my way out of it. Once <laughs> I realized I wasn't getting out of it, then uh, I'm like fuck you know like I would go to take a chair and throw it and like I get fucking tackled by like these orderly dudes you know. And they slam me onto this fucking uh, like stretcher like bed thing with straps on it, and like someone jabs a needle in my butt cheek, and then I just straight took a nap. 
<laughs> like that Thor is eating shit, man. Like it's gnarly, man. So I they just out. held you down and whacked you with that. Yeah, stuff. they just held me down and fucking jammed in my butt cheek, and I was out, dude. And then I woke up from my nap, and and uh, I'm in. It was so funny too. Are you tied down. It was at Cedar Sinai, the Thallians. You know, like uh, I. What's that mean? Thallions was just the the mental health oh, like okay. uh, like division or whatever. So like they have um they've got they had two wings of the of the psych ward there. Like one like they, they've got the standard issue harmful to yourself or others. You know, like committed for the involuntary psychiatric hold. Then they've got the the something else like the extraordinarily <laughs> you know like. Uh, the extraordinarily qualifying individuals, you know, and, and that's you the something else wing <laughs> Yeah, so so they had me on the something else wing and like whoa Yeah, and like my roommate was like fucking like 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 hiding in the closet from like fucking demons Oh, dude, it was I mean, I, I would have been hearing voices for like a couple of years, you know <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah. But nothing like this guy What did the voices say? Uh, oh, dude like, Steve-O, you're the best No, dude, you I had like, two of yourself on your back <laughs> <laughs> I had angels and demons, you know Like some of them would tell me like You're worthless, you need to die And I would be like trying to suffocate myself to death, you know Really? Well, yeah, I mean, not like with anything. I'm just holding my breath. <laughs> there was a so game. So non-committal. Well, 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 no, but that was the, like oh, a. I died. No. Well, right, right. So <laughs> you're, you're right. But that was the, the whole thing was I was hearing voices because I was huffing so much nitrous oxide and like oh, while Jesus. while um while you're doing ketamine while I was doing cocaine. I, I never smoke this joint. Just fucking relax. <laughs> I, I, I can't with you in the room, yeah. right? So, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you make me feel so much better about myself. Though. Like I, <laughs> that's what I, 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 I used to watch. I used to watch Intervention so that I could feel better about myself. Yeah, I'm I'm worried about your health. More than I'm worried about like you overdosing. I'm worried yeah. you're over. I'm, it's a, it's a slow deterioration of your fiber. Yeah, like the stuff that keeps you together. You talking to me or Brian? Him? Brian. I'm fine now. I, I, yeah, I, I feel better? great now. I feel like I just worked out because after talking to Steve. <laughs> you just had some wheatgrass <laughs> juice in a yoga class. Yeah, I feel like a kale right. coming out my well, ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but whatever. Like they said, so now I'm in the something else ward. Like people are like the, not people. One guy, I remember one guy like shit on the fucking ground and was like break dancing in it, like trying to like. <laughs> 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 I mean, it sounds like I'm making it up. I swear I'm not, dude. He was his goal was to like smear it around and, sp and spread it around as much as he could. And this is in the room with you? No, no, that was in the hallway. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! That was in the hallway. It was another dude. He's break dancing on his own shit. Dude, I mean, it looked like he was break dancing, but he was like he took a shit and he was trying to smear it around as much as he could. And so it just, oh. it just looked like he was break dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and oh like, my god! And they, they had me in there, oh. and and because I was so, <laughs> because I was so belligerent, <laughs> I was so belligerent that they changed my status from fifty one fifty to fifty two fifty, which meant they had like like fifty one fifty is three days, fifty two fifty is two weeks. So they had me for two weeks, and like after like four days, then they moved me over to the to the regular psych ward. And like I was in there and um, this guy who is like a, a fucking, he says he's a heroin addict and he's a patient and like he's, he's got this book about alcoholism and he's like, dude, I, you, have, you really like, this book can really help you. Like you need this book. And I'm like, why is a fucking heroin addict giving me a book about alcoholism when we're both like on suicide watch in a psych ward? You know, <laughs> like what? What's the deal? And and I was like, at the point, I was like, I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't get sober. I couldn't. You know, I was, I honestly felt like, like, not even felt like. I mean, like, just core belief. You know, that like, if I could have ever gotten sober, like I was past that point. I was too far down the line. I was a write off, a lost cause, and like. So I just, you know, like from when the fucking first time I was in rehab, you know, like there's like, there's no chance. And so like one night, like I couldn't sleep and I like just open this fucking stupid book, like not to find a solution, but straight up to kill time. You know, that's all I'm trying to do. And I'm reading it and it's talking about like, you know, like hopeless alcoholics determined to die and this and that. And then like they... They become like, you know, they get better or whatever, you know, they become like the finest men you could meet. And, and I'm like, 
just remember reading and thinking like dude what it's saying is like that the more hopeless the more fucked up you are the better the chance is for recovery which is actually really like, fully, fully. Why, why is that because if you have like any inkling like that like you can manage it that you could get better that you could stop on your own then you're just straight up not a candidate you know, oh, the only, so that's the rock bottom theory. Pretty much, and it's 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 true. Like if 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 you feel like you got it, or, or, or it's not that big of a deal, because like you that's Brian. right, right. That's yeah, Brian. Like, He's fucked. I mean, like step one, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, you mm -hmm. know, or drugs or whatever the case may be. Like like like, and and that like that, I successfully did. You know, like I can't do it. I'm fucking powerless, and so that's like the first step. That's like the prerequisite. And so it's like, I don't know. And then these guys come in and talk about alcoholism. And I wouldn't have fucking ever listened to a word they said. But they like, you know, but I was locked up in a psych ward. And so I did. And I'm like, you know, thinking there's nothing I could do about it. But they told their stories and how they lived. And I'm like, oh, well, these guys can do it, you know. And, and so I was just like, my life is a fucking mess. I was in the psych ward long enough to be like, okay, my life's a fucking mess. Like, it's time. And I went to rehab and, you know, like. And so you've been clean from then seven on. Seven and a half years. Just from that moment on, from the, the from that psych moment ward on. on. Yep. Wow, and has there been, and been any moments where you attempted to go off the wagon? Yeah, I mean, sure, but like not, like, I, I, I went from there, like door to door into like a rehab. You know, and I remember, like, because I knew from the fucking back in the day, like, the whole 95% percent of alcoholics don't get sober. Like, the, the guy who was in charge of the rehab, and back then it was Dr. Drew. Like, he was, he was the, the chemical dependency director of this hospital in Pasadena. And, and, uh, and I was it's like... a nice oh. place to go, Pasadena. Yeah, it's and I, I told Drew, I said, I said, hey, man, you know, I'm, like, right out of, fresh out of the psych ward, like, you know, and I'm, I was such a fucking character... I was like, and, and I'm like, dude, I know that, like, I know that, you know, the odds are not in my fucking favor. I know, like, I'm not, I don't want to waste my time. If I'm going to do this, I want to get it right. So I told Drew, however long you recommend that I, that, you know, that I stay here, I want to stay significantly longer because I want to give myself, like, you know, I want to give myself an advantage. He said, that's great, you know, but, like, don't stay here more than 30 days. If you're really serious, go into, like, a sober living, you know, like a halfway house kind of a deal. And and so I did, man. I did everything those fucking people told me. <clears throat> I did like uh, <clears throat> all the fucking recovery shit that, that they talk about. I did it all, and I, and I went to that fucking sober living, and I stayed there until I had two two full years of sobriety. I was filming. You were you stayed in sober living for so two years? Two, well, I, I was bouncing around treatment, um, like uh, for six months. You know, because because I was having a tough time with it, I just stayed in fucking treatment. You know, you, when you say bouncing around treatment, like well, I, I I did thirty days there. Then I went into like a, a sober living that doubled. It was like it was like sort of mid level care. So like I was free to go at night as long as I was home by curfew. But all day long, like, we had all of our little groups and like like you know structured rehab activities. How much know? does all this shit cost? It's got to be oh stupid God. expensive. It was it was stupid. Like the thirty days was like a hundred grand. Oh my God! What the fuck? And what? I didn't even necessarily know that. <laughs> so you how know? did you pay for all this? I paid for it with my own money. Oh my God! So yeah. you're just burning through your savings while you're in there. Burning through savings, yeah. <laughs> Big oh time. my God! So yeah. six months. It's and better then two than the years. fucking three hundred three hundred thousand dollars I spent on fucking suing like my <laughs> these fucking people I knew I was gonna get nothing out of. <laughs> you spent three hundred grand suing people that you knew you were gonna get nothing out of. Right, I got like Who? my back catalog. Like, these guys that, that I had a like distribution deal with. I got uh, my back catalog of DVDs, but whatever. That's not worth anything. It anymore. was just a straight resentment. Fucking. Oh, I, I see. I just spent three. I just wanted to fuck their lives up. Yeah, I know that. Feeling. And I did it, but it cost me three hundred grand. Rehab was a better investment. Yeah. <laughs> so, so while you're in there, are you working? Hell no. I had Nothing. fucking burned all my bridges, man. You know, like, I mean, we weren't doing anything with Jackass and like anything else I had going on. Like I had a TV show that, which was really like did well in the ratings, but I was such a fucking nightmare that they canceled it just on the grounds that I, they did not want to fuck with me. Wow. <laughs> I had the spot right after, um, Monday Night Raw, the wrestling on the USA Network. Wow. I came on immediately after, and I kept, like, a fucking whopping percentage of their viewership. What was the name of the show? Dr. Steve-O. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went around in a fucking uh, modified ambulance with a hot chick and a fucking 365-pound black like football player driver dude 
just trying to de wussify America one wussy at a time. You know, and what I would, were you trying to get them to do? I would accept like in submissions where people would be like, Dr. Steve, I need your help. Like, I, I, you know, I'm a wussy. Like, this is my, my unique case. And I would prescribe for them some kind of like outrageous, like jackass bullshit to make them come out of their shell or like, it was good, man. Like, uh, I did a great job. Problem was, that as soon as the camera stopped rolling, I fell off of the radar. Except for my my, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> the it was it was with Bunim and Murray, the production company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I would be started like openly attacking like uh, John Murray. <laughs> Why? <laughs> On my uh, for two hundred people. <laughs> like, nah, fuck. Because he was he wouldn't like pay somebody, one of my buddies, something I wanted them to get paid for, which they didn't, weren't obligated to fucking pay in the first place. But I'm trying to ruin his reputation with like all these you know on my fucking crazy email list and that was what killed that was what killed the show despite the fact that it was like number one in its fucking time slot oh my god <laughs> so i didn't have that fucking to to get to distract me from my recovery <laughs> so you are doing you're just doing, nothing, just doing but nothing but recovery i was doing nothing so but how do you spend your days like when you're doing that um, well, I mean, when you're in rehab, rehab, like you, you got like fucking structured shit all day long. Like what, what does that mean? Like, what do you do? I mean, like different kind of groups, like, uh, they take you out to, to various kinds of meetings, you know, like, um, you got like fucking like little therapy bits, like, uh, you know, whatever. It's basically like summer camp. It's just, everything is geared towards teaching you how to stay sober. All know? day long. Yeah. Well, how much can they teach you about staying so? I, I'm, I'm confused. It, it, there's like, uh, there, there's, there's a lot, and I mean, a lot of it's redundant. But yeah, but it means going on for two years. Oh no, no, that, like that, this is, I'm talking this about the first, like the 30, first 30, days. thirty days. I'm okay. talking about the first thirty. So days. the first thirty days is like teaching you like coping mechanisms. Yeah, like, and what mostly to do. just sort of keeping you like in a safe environment. Is really and keeping what it you is. occupied right. and drilling right. it into your head that you can do this and. Right, and like, you, like the, thirty days isn't going to do shit for anybody because it's such a slow process, you mm. know. But uh, like, th it was great for me to stay and sort of in that environment for two years, because uh, because you know then like, I'm a, like undisciplined motherfucker, you know. By the end of it, I was so like used to like being up by nine a.m. with my bed made, like pissing into fucking plastic cups, like at random, you know, twice a week. Like scrubbing the toilet when it's my turn to scrub the toilet, you know, like keeping everything, you know, and 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 I did that, and I'm filming Jackass 3D. I'm like, oh yeah, like I gotta go fucking get launched into the fucking sky in a porta potty full of dog shit, you know. <laughs> I might be a little bit late for curfew tonight, you know, like uh, or, or whatever, you know, like. And, and I had what's this, curfew? What time? I uh, on, on the on the the weekdays it was. 10 and then on the weekends it was 11 or 12 what or maybe no i think it was 11 on the weekdays and 12 on the weekends i think it's hilarious that after a certain time of night like they think you're just gonna get wacky well i mean whatever you can't like, stay up you can't go to a diner you know what dude it saved my life man it mm -hmm. fucking saved my life big time and i'm so fucking stoked about it so just the 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 schedule the rigid schedule the routine <clears throat> yeah the structure man the structure and did like you enjoy the, it in there did you have fun did you meet nice people i mean i remember it pretty well my roommate was cool and like he snored which was like the fucking greatest thing ever because i knew when it was cool to jack off you know <laughs> 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 you know it's like the sweet sounds of snoring you know because it's like awkward jacking off with the guy in the room mm. but if he's snoring it's totally cool right yeah and Meanwhile, so that the helped fake a lot, snoring man. with one eye open <laughs> Watching you beat off, and he's joining in. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the middle of you, you yeah, jerking off, dude, you that was moaning. fine, man. Like, uh, I mean, that helped a lot. If, if, he, if he didn't snore, I would have had a tougher time. You so know? are you allowed to have relationships where you're in there? Are you supposed to, like, stare clear of um, anything that can sort of any distract you? I mean, there's no, like, hard and fast rule about that. Like, they say, like, avoid getting in a relationship in your first year. I got into your first a, year. Yeah, I got into a relationship. I mean, I, I like. What if you find like the perfect girl? 
Yeah, I mean, it happens. Sorry, like, bitch. They're, 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 they're working it, on my sobriety. Right, it happens, you know, but, like, there's just not, like, you know, like, relationships gone sideways is, like, the number one fucking thing that makes people get loaded, you know? Oh, right, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's good to, like, kind of, like, you know, just worry about, mm -hmm. about you know, your sobriety. But I had seven months, and I got in a relationship with a chick who had, like, one year. And it was cool, you know, like, we were, mm -hmm. like, it lasted for, like, ten months. So when you're in there, you're in there for 30 days. This is the hardcore version. And then you go from the 30 days to like a living situation. Uh -huh. And now how is that? Is that like a house? Like how's that work? It, uh, it was like an apartment complex at that point. You know? So it's an apart. You got your own apartment then. Yeah, but no I had no skate park. No, no skate park. Yeah, like <laughs> that, that, that was my thing. I was like, man, I used to have fucking four apartments in one building. Now I got four dudes in one apartment. <laughs> so you had to live with other people yeah, in I your had, apartment. I had, I had a roommate, and you know, there's two two bedroom apartment and uh -huh. two guys in each room. What? Yeah, and that was the deal. Man. Why is that the deal? Because they want to make sure you're not alone by yourself. Where uh, you can do devious I shit. I guess. I mean, like perhaps you know. Uh, I guess that's kind of the deal. But like now, what happened there? Like, and and we would have groups from like you know eight or nine in the morning until two in the afternoon, and then you're free to go. And and I would be like skateboarding or whatever, like trying to film some wacky shit or whatever, you know. Like, uh, I didn't do like much like like in a professional sense. Um, and I was working with, uh, you know, I was working on all this like 12 step shit, you know? So like, I get like, uh, you know, we do like the, the, the searching and fearless moral inventory where like we go through like, you know, basically like what have we done that like, that we feel or, like, like we make a list of resentments, we make a list of fears and we make a list of shit we feel guilty about is basically how it works. And like you know, I started off with just the shit I felt guilty about, and I'm like, oh, like I just I just basically wrote a list of like the shit that I felt like you know the most terrible about. And when when I went through it, like, and this is like totally. If anyone's in recovery, like avoid like making this this mistake. I treated it like I was just like you know putting myself on trial for being a bad person, and like you know the whole point is just to figure out like what. And you take an inventory and like you, you discard what's not helpful and you keep what is, you know, mm -hmm. you, you just discontinue shit that doesn't serve you. But I'm like, no, I'm a terrible person. I did this and this and this and this. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, you know. And, and, and like, I was just got like went into like a gnarly depression and felt like I'd fucking, I don't deserve to live, you know, <laughs> like whatever. And like, I fucking checked myself into psych ward number two, you know, while you were in recovery. Yeah. I had, because like, you were going I had, over, I had like three months of sobriety and, and I went to one of my meetings and I was like, I was like all the work I'm putting into my fucking recovery. All I'm, all I feel like I'm getting out of it is self-hatred. I feel like I just can't forgive myself for the shit I've done. I fucking hate myself, and, you know. And this all came about from just doing an inventory on your past. Pretty much, yeah. I wow. just had, just had like, and it, it says, you know, in, in some of the literature, man, it says that like, you know, uh, the inventory process will like, you know, bring about like self-loathing for a lot of people. When we take an honest look at like the fucking pieces of shit that we became, like that's like a, a, a not an uncommon side effect, you know, like. But and so just, what what sort of tools do they give you to to look at your past but not not be angry at yourself, not judge yourself? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Like like when, when I'm helping guys get sober, I, I try and tell them, look, man, this isn't a process of putting you on trial, man. This is just fucking figuring out what to stop doing, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the best thing I can say about it. But when I was in that second psych ward, like. Uh, you know, I was like, like I wrote, I wrote some letters to people who have felt the most fucked up about what I'd done, you know, and like, and, and it actually kind of turned around where I was like, you know, I was like, t t today, I'm fucking so thankful for the shit that I did that I felt that bad about because like, n no longer is it like, oh, I, I don't deserve to live because I did that. N like for me today, it's like, I'm fucking desperate to not be that fucking asshole anymore, you know? And mm -hmm. so it turned into, you know, and like when I first went in, I was like the kind of thought like, man, this is going to be my new thing. I'm going to get sober and like, you know, I'm going to be like, you know, the world's going to kind of owe me. I'm going to revive my career a little bit. But once I got through that point of like, you know, like sort of the, the, the fucking, uh, 
you know, the, the dust settling and me being able to, me being confronted with what I had turned into, then it wasn't even about what can I get out of it? You know, it was just about, I don't want to be that fucking guy anymore. And so I came out of that second rehab or that second psych ward and I was so desperate to not be that fucking piece of shit anymore. And I was like, dude, I'm starting over. And I went into the fucking, like, I went into another rehab, like the fucking, like uh, the, the hardcore, you know, and I was just like, I'm doing this to, to be... I had, like, had my priorities straight, you know, and then I was there for 60 days, and I said so by the time I finished that, it was six months, and then I went into, like, the regular sober living. And so the, there's a lot of fucking money you're spending here. Yeah, the the, the last rehab was seven uh, seventy five hundred per month, so oh. at least uh, I... But yeah, fucking, it was like thirty grand that second rehab. I don't know the, the second psych ward. I spent a lot of money on it, man. Fucking whatever. What are the guys that you were in the apartment with? What did those guys do for a living that they could afford to live in this shack? I paid the rent and I paid them each like a thousand bucks a month to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you pay him money for what? Uh, well, one guy was just said that like he was on call to edit whatever footage like that, you know that uh, that that I wanted edited, uh -huh. you know, like to help me broadcast my downward spiral, basically. Right. <laughs> you know, like I put some really upsetting videos. So out the people there. that you were living in the assisted situation, like this is post the the major rehab, right? You're in the major rehab for thirty right. days, and then well, you're in the apartment, well, right? I mean, I was, I, there's different levels of of, of, of rehab, but mm -hmm. yeah, like, um, yeah, and and I wound up like back and yeah, I mean, it was in the whole deal. Like at one point, I was in a house for a while, sharing a bedroom with the guy who snored, and you know, and I, and I, and and you know, at the end, I was in the, the apartment, but it was all the same deal. And what did these guys do for a living that they could afford to like take all this time off of the, life the, too? The the sober living situation was like, uh, you know, like that was like one thousand bucks a month, and that you know covers like uh your meals as well oh, okay so it's kind of more cost effective than if you're gonna try and find an apartment or anything like that and in the sober living situation it's like these guys work during the day and they would come there and stay with you Yeah, if you don't work you have to do a certain number of hours of uh of service work so i would volunteer at a nursing home whoa yeah it was dope man like uh i would just go i'd go fucking hang out with old people and play, i'd call the bingo numbers <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and then wow. and then i would like go and fucking film a movie for paramount <laughs> like it'd be like oh hey guys i'm not gonna be able to call bingo tomorrow because i'm gonna be like drinking a fat guy's sweat <laughs> <laughs> so when did it feel like you were free of the monkey you know like when, did, when uh, was the well, monkey you're off your back the monkey. never never like nah, right dude. now you're not free I mean, whatever, like, um, I, uh, just have like a way that I live my life, you know, that, um, I still stay connected. It's like a fridge, man. You know, like, uh, if you unplug the fridge, then everything in it's going to go rotten, you know, like you got to fucking stay plugged in, which means that like these things that, that we do to stay sober, like you just fucking keep like doing Like what them. kind of things? Well, like helping other people stay sober is like the biggest thing, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you, you help, you take people through their 12 steps. And who are these people that you take through and do you know them? Uh, I mean, whatever, like you, you meet them sort of in the community, you know, like, uh, they'll ask you like, will you be my sponsor? You and know? so when you have a sponsor, they call you up in the middle of the night, Hey, I'm thinking about doing heroin, like that kind of thing. Talk them that, down. That, that is the idea. It's better to call before you do it than after. <laughs> right. Because there's no point in talking to a, a loaded dude. And how often do you do this? Like, how often do you work with people? Uh, I mean, it depends. Like, most guys, like, aren't, like, that active where, like, where they actually really call a lot. But, like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm i always starting a guy, you know. There's always guys I, I, I'm starting off. Really? And, and, and just very few of them stick with it where they get. Like, the guys I've taken all the way through the steps... There's been two. Two and, out of and, how many? Oh, my God. Out of the, well over 100. So out of 100 people, two of them have become totally sober. Um, I mean, they've been, like, uh, to say totally sober. I mean, you're totally sober as long as you're not, you're not loaded. But, right, uh, maybe totally sober yeah, like, like, like you the, are right now. Um, like, you're not and, doing and, any and, drugs. And you have no plan. One guy got all the way through the steps, but then he's, he's drinking again. So, uh. you know. I got one. I got one guy that's been all the way through the steps that's still in. Do you think? Are you one of those people that thinks that if you were a junkie, 
that you have to be sober forever. Like you, you can't you can't <clears throat> go back to like say if you had a heroin problem, you can't drink. They say once you become a pickle, you never go back to being a cucumber. So yeah, like like uh, like there's no if I pick up a drink or a drug, I'm fucked. If I decide, I'll pick up exactly where I left off. But I and know then, people. And then all I want is like to make sure I'm doing enough drugs that people are walking around my fucking apartment, my house, who are not actually there. <laughs> but I know people that used to be like heroin addicts that can have beer, they can smoke a little yeah, weed. Yeah, they can get away with it, man. Then, then power to them. It's dangerous that's, to that's, even that's, try. That's, you know? why, not... why, why is it dangerous though? I mean, because... if they're if they're free of it, like okay, here's a perfect example: Anthony Bourdain. He was a heroin addict. He was a junkie, full on. He yeah, still likes like, to have uh, a beer. He likes to yeah. drink, doesn't drink at home. Perry Farrell, not... I think, is like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have heroin. He drinks wine or whatever. Hey, man, power to him. But, uh, but for but me... But for you, it's not. Yeah, it just I come from work. a long line of alcoholics, man. Like, the way that my family is structured, or my, my lineage... Like, Dad was like a... Broke the mold of his family. Dad comes from a line of, of like academics like phds scholars theologians zoologists like and he broke the mold of his family by becoming a businessman and a super successful one at that mom's side of the family everybody is alcoholic drug addict gambler and suicide how'd your mom and dad meet uh partying I, she was super hot you know <laughs> like um but yeah so like everybody i mean everybody on my mom's side of the family is either dead or dying from alcoholism. I would say, I mean, my cousins, I guess, I don't know, my one cousin's a, a mortician. You know? Whoa. Yeah, That's I went to clown college. That's a of itself. I went to clown college. He went to mortician school Ooh. at the same time. What's clown college? Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. For real? Like, yeah. What do you do? Um, this is an exploding shoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when I, like I, you know, I said I left the University of Miami. I wanted to become a crazy stuntman, right? And I, and all I really accomplished, like with that, you know, like, even with all my crazy skills with drinking bong water, like I couldn't get a job, <laughs> like, and uh, and so I was just like homeless for three years, just getting arrested and fucking hospitalized. You were homeless for three years? Well, I was couch surfing for three years. I had the government test money or to try to test drugs on me for money. Money. What? Yeah, like, and I mean, every, they, they do medical studies for like, uh, they do medical studies for whatever, you know, like if it's going to come in contact with the human body, like if it's a toothpaste or something, they got to do a medical study. But if it's a toothpaste, then you're not going to get paid shit. If it's fucking drugs for pigs and cows, then, then you're going to get it. Like, based on how dangerous the study is, the more money you get. And so I signed up for, to have drugs for pigs and cows tested on me. <laughs> which, which, I, which I recently found out the drug is, was banned. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, yeah, dude. Yeah, because like, they, well, they, this was in like 19, the, in January of 94. You're like a house that you like, you get to the back, like, <laughs> well, we, this is the last door. Hold on, what's that over there? <laughs> Open that. Oh, geez, there's a whole other house in here. <laughs> Yeah, it was like they, they, they want like, you know, 1994, like whatever, the January of 94. And they, they wanted to, to pass this drug uh, through the FDA uh, called ractopamine hydrochloride. And the goal of that, they didn't know much about it, except they knew that it would make the cattle like uh, more lean. Like uh, it, it would like increase the muscle mass, decrease the fat. So, and, but it would work the opposite way of steroids somehow. And like it was so that they could uh, appeal to a more kind of health conscious market. They could sell like leaner meat, you know, less fat. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that if it's going to become legal, then like by the virtue of the fact that when people eat the meat, they're going to get like a minute trace of this drug in the in the, you know the meat. Now they have to not only test the drug on people, but they have to test like how much can the people withstand of oh, that, that drug. So like oh my they knew God. they knew it's they terrifying. <laughs> They knew that it was going to, like, increase our heart rates, like, uh, you know, and so what they, the, the target for the study was to give it to us until somebody in the study um, had their resting heart rate, like, laying down resting, like, 150 beats a minute. Like, um, and it turned out that I had, like, the fucking most badass heart in the study. Like, like the only time I went over 100 was when the guy like monitoring my heart with like the ultrasound thing and the, you know like uh the, they show the baby on the screen 
Like uh, he was like telling me stories about like killing people in Vietnam or some shit. And I what? Was, like, <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, some like uh, you know. Yeah, it was like uh, telling me like war stories, and that got my heart like. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been normally like like what kind of stories was he telling? You? I can't remember. It was just like he was in the war and he killed people, and I was he's like, telling you while he's doing an ultrasound <laughs> in your heart. Yeah, <laughs> I could kill and, and you the, right now. And the, the, the same guy, people. the same guy when he was looking at it, it showed like your blood like going in your heart, like uh, red and coming out of your heart blue, like on the screen. It was right. really fucking cool, and uh, and I just had like a strong heart, you know. He's like he said, man, what a squeeze, you know, like. <laughs> You know, like uh, what a squeeze! What a so squeeze! It's just gone so yes, yeah, so I got I got two thousand bucks. It. Yeah, and I was I was homeless anyway. So like they, they gave they, you oh, two thousand bucks. Dude, I did that oh. in Austin, Texas too. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was in Austin, Texas at this place called Pharmaco LSR. <sighs> you know, it's like I told you, I got in the van with that guy and we drove out to Northern California mm-hmm. to uh, to Lake Tahoe to try and get jobs washing dishes at Squaw Valley to get free snowboard passes but it wasn't snowing so then we went to fucking colorado and i I got a job like cleaning a meat room at a supermarket and that sucked so i got one with this other dude and drove to austin texas and slept on a roof until we got into the medical study and then we left with two grand and we were stoked and then like you know i wound up like getting a car and following the grateful dead and selling drugs and jesus christ uh, and i was homeless for like three years and, and um and, and like periodically, I'd get my hands on cameras and do really fucked up shit. And you know, I was getting video footage, but like ultimately, like you know, I, I just fucking was really bummed, dude. It wasn't. It didn't. Like after three years, I couldn't take anymore, and I like reached out to my sister, and she let me move in with her in Albuquerque, and I was like. I would eat all her food, and I wouldn't fucking work, and I had no money, and if I did have money, I was loaded, and I was loud, and I was, you know. So when my sister found out about Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Billy Clown College, she's like, dude, this could be the way to get my brother the fuck out of my house. You know? <laughs> so, like, so, like, she told me about it. Like, I got home, and she's like, how are you getting to Denver by Monday? And I, I hitchhiked from Albuquerque to Denver, and I got there in two rides and just fucking went ape shit. Have that. you written a book? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Is this all in the book? Totally, dude. My oh. book, my book's like uh, it barely made the New York Times bestseller list. But that's because you didn't come on here first. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, dude. Uh, if people had heard these fucking stories and knew that they were in the yeah, book, it, oh my god, it, it barely made the best New York Times bestseller list. But the like, my, what I'm most proud of, my book is my masterpiece, man. Like, um, on Amazon. It's got like the, the the cumulative average rating mm-hmm. is a full five out of five stars. There's wow. no, no fucking partial stars. Even people who hate me and want to hate my book, give it a fucking five. Did star you write rating. it yourself? I worked with a writer on it, but uh, but I don't think anybody has like been more involved in the collaboration. Like that's awesome. Like we bounced we bounced all that shit back and forth. I'm like, dude, I would never use that word. I don't, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I I worked my dick off on that fucking book. That your story is fucking insane. It's like it just has. Legs. Layers upon layers well, upon thanks, layers. Man. You know, that's and and that's kind of like what's dope about the fucking like the 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 comedy show, man. I'm just like really bummed to like to retire like my shit. You know, like, how are you retiring it? What do you mean? Well, you know, like you retire material once the fucking sh- special comes out. Yeah, we make new stuff. Of course. Yeah, of course. please. It's a good. It's be a an com- opportunity for growth. Right. You want to be a comedy factory, not a comedy warehouse. Mm, <laughs> that's one way to look at it. Yeah, yeah that's the well, only way to look. Well, at your it. your comedy. Should should kind of represent who you are right now. Well, if you're yeah, doing comedy for I, 20 years ago, it doesn't really represent who you are right, right now. Right, of course. And the, like the whole, like, I don't fucking, like I told you, it's like the history is like super condensed, you know, like, uh, you know, so that it's like funny. And with the story points, I like on story points I have, like when I say like about how I graduated from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Billy Clown College, but like I wasn't one of the clowns who got fucking contract with the circus. So I had to like borrow money to get a fucking Greyhound bus back to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I hung my fancy clown costume in the fucking closet and sold shitty weed. And the bags of fucking weed I sold did not weigh anywhere near what they were supposed to weigh. But you know, my life fucking sucked really bad. But after I got done ripping you off, like at least I would show you like a fucking epic unbelievable cool trick like this one and then like on that point like we'll fucking bring the bring the thing like the table out and i'm going to fucking show you the most incredible bar trick ever so when did you when did you put this book out 
2011. And did you go on the full tour, do all these radio shows? And I mean, I did like radio tour. Like uh, I went on Howard Stern. Like, uh, well, see, that must have helped, right? Yeah, I mean, it didn't do like terrible, you know. But, but just, I feel like, like um, you need like a platform where you could just talk for hours and hours and hours. Right. It'd be cool if I had like a, a podcast too. I just like that's what know. I'm saying. Right, man. I'm, I'm, everybody's tired of me going, dude, you should have a podcast. <laughs> right, but, but then again, like, on the other I should, hand, I should sell a t-shirt that says, dude, you should have a podcast. Right. Because I've said you it know. to so many people. But right. does yeah, anybody and, and, that and unfortunately, have a like a lot of those fucking people took you up on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not every podcast is the Joe Rogan experience, dude, you know? Like, it's the most fucking annoying question ever. Like, hey, will you do my podcast? It's like, mm, you know, when you get yeah. cornered by your buddy and like, yeah. Well, some, <laughs> some people are... Yeah, they did not. But it's it's one of those things where you got to kind of work at it. It doesn't seem like you have to work on it. Like stand up, stand up is sort of the same way. Of like course, when we were doing Kill Tony last night, it's one of the things I wanted to tell people. Like, it seems like it's just you talking, but you have to figure out how people are perceiving you. And For you know, sure. And that's that's a big part of doing a podcast too. But you would be really good at it. You I really think, would. I, th- I think it would it would be good, man. And at if some you just point, did like one a week, you'd probably it would take you a year or two to run out of stories. Um, or, I mean, not even necessarily. Like, who knows if like we're gonna tell stories about shit that happened or what's going on? Yeah, I mean, of yeah. course, dude. Do you, you have gotta, like a guy that you could do it with? We could bounce shit off him. Do you have a good buddy that you? I've thought about like uh, vibe well with. I've thought about doing it. You know, there's this fucking platform. This uh, this um, what you call it? Uh, it's called You Now. One of these streaming things like Periscope or mm. Meerkat. But like, but the fucking dude, this is so crazy. Like, you now and like everybody who is a user of this platform, like, uh, like has an account that they like put money into. And so the way it works is like while you're streaming, like you like their questions show up and they they want you to answer their questions. So they'll like they have like different denominations of like money that they like. Give you like you, you're like, a cam girl now, <laughs> right? I swear, dude. That's I swear, essentially the I, same. I, my agents, my agents, like like bullied me into doing it. I tried it, right? And I just sat there, like just telling stories to like the, the fans that were on um, fucking watching, and like by the end of it, I was on there for like thirty nine minutes, and then I I fucking ended the stream, and it's like. You just made one thousand dollars. What? <laughs> I, feel like a fucking, I need to jump on that right now. I felt like a fucking panhandler. <laughs> it is very cam girl esque. Yeah. But if you did that all the time, it would probably at least pay for a studio if you set up a studio somewhere. Sure, I mean, for sure. But you yeah. don't want. See, you don't want to people to have to pay to ask you questions. Though, I don't. Right? Yeah, like I said, yeah. I felt like a fucking panhandler, and yeah. I hated it, and I haven't done it since. You know. Yeah, I, I did this show, and the guy who promoted the show, uh, I didn't know about it. Something that Brian Callen set up. This guy, love that guy. Love man. that guy. What a fucking guy. But this, this guy had set it up, and Brian, I love Brian too, but he doesn't pay attention to shit. It's not like real good with details. I had to ask him a bunch of questions about the show. Like, hey man, there's a guy who's a DJ who's saying that he's spinning records in between us. Are we? Is there a fucking break in between us where there's a DJ coming? Oh, I'll check. I'll check. It's just you and I. I get there. It's not just me and him. It's me, him. There's a fucking MC, three <laughs> local comics, a girl who's doing 20 minutes, and it was a disaster. We had to clean up this giant mess on his podcast no 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 it's a comedy show but uh, anyway gotcha. the guy had made people pay extra to take pictures to meet us and uh, take pictures exactly and i said dude you can't do that i, bag I, go, I would people never every time i would never do that and you can't do that you can't do that it's fun i take pictures with everybody sure. I, i'll do a theater and i'll wait well, for hours and i'll sure. take pictures with a thousand fucking people of course like you can't charge people an extra 20 bucks to take Hell pictures no. with me That's but this guy the, did the it on I his own it. He did it on his own as a promoter, and this is all shit that Callan just didn't pay attention to. The way the way I do that, I, and, and Brian's cool about taking pictures as well. Oh yeah, no, he is but, totally cool. He yeah, just yeah. didn't pay attention. Right. He just let this guy handle everything who we who we didn't need in the first place. You know what do you what do you need? You, you just you know, we don't need a promoter. This is Twitter. That's the promoter. You right. know, let people know you're there. They show up. It's not that hard. Like, what is this promoter in quotes doing? What is he doing? He's just trying to get his friends on the show and trying to charge extra to take pictures. It was stupid, but right. but that's a gross model, like the model of like people having to one pay for that, VIP, that, you know, oh, entrance yeah, or all, all that, that gross shit, meet that. and greet. 
the um the one thing though is that the cell phone pictures like take fucking forever. Yes. They, you know. So what I do is I have my my website built mm -hmm. where like I take the pictures myself. And like when when the fucking I'm so good at it. Too. I like, stole your idea. Nice. We stole that. <laughs> Jamie comes with me to some shows and takes pictures and we it's upload better, them. It's, it's better. Yeah, dude. It takes way quicker. It's, it's like so one quicker. third the time. It's better too if you take them yourself because that way when the flash goes off, you turn the camera around and you can show the people their pictures so they can see it for like quality, quality control. Don't let them see it. <laughs> oh yeah. Because then they go, oh my god, take that again. Oh my god, I, I, delete I, I, it. I do it. Oh my god. The, I, I the do worst it because... is girls who like look at photos of themselves and everything's great. Like, oh my god, I hate that picture. Do it again. Yeah, yeah, but, but no, no, no. I, this is what you look like. Yeah, but that's the thing is that like for me, like uh, I, I my camera's so fast, just boom. You're like, oh no, okay, boom. You know, half the time I don't oh, like no? it. Oh no, you don't like it. Half the time I don't like it, so I'll take another one. Why you don't know? you like it? Whatever, dude. But if I, <laughs> I want to, like, I want to be picky. You know, I don't like the way my teeth look. <laughs> right. So so uh, so the fucking like, um, and I just want the people to, to be really like happy. I'll give mm -hmm. them like a, a bunch of cheese from man. Like I want them to be super happy with it because I know that when they fucking go to my website and pull it, that they're gonna post it. On their fucking all their social media, and I know mm. that they're gonna post it, and then yes. and then that's that's sort of my grassroots way of letting people know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, no, it's a smart move, and I started doing it right after I heard you did. It. I think Brian told me about it. Mm. Yeah, and uh, a bunch of people do that now. Right, and exactly. Gabriel does that too, right? Doesn't Gabriel Gacy yeah. do something like that similar? At it's a smart of, move. Right at the end of every show, I say, okay, now I'm gonna like uh, before I do my last fucking amazing stunt, I'm gonna do. Uh, I, mean, I'm, I want to thank you guys for coming out and giving me a shot at stand up. And, you know, I'm gonna fucking when I walk off the stage, I'm not going anywhere I'm, until I take a photo with every single one of you guys. And here's how you get them: you go to my fucking website and I, and I explain it real easy. And I say, and one last thing: if you want to get out of here a little quicker, the good news is I'm a New York Times best-selling author, and I've got my fucking my book, and I've got my fucking like my hats, my shirts. And if if you guys want to get any of this shit then uh, that puts you to the front of the line. So I have like a merch line and then a photo line. Oh, I see. So, so like, you have so to go so to many... the merch line first to get to the photo well, line. Yeah, Exit and, and, through the gift shop. And it's like... And, and You're fucking Disneyland, dude. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. Dude. Like, I'm still going to take a picture with every single fucking person. Right, I It's just I know that I'm going to take a picture of the people who buy merch first, you know? Uh -huh. And so like a lot of people would, would be like, oh, well, fuck, man, like... I don't want to, you know, and I tell them, like, if you don't want to get anything, that's great, but please just, like, I mean, hang out, like, have a drink, whatever, like, but just fucking stick around and get that picture so I can thank you in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people will think, like, man, like, you know, I want to get a picture, you know, I don't, I don't really want to buy anything, but, like, fuck, I'll just buy something to get the fuck out of here. So, like, you end up selling, like, way more merch, you know? And nobody feels like you're a dick, you know. You still stick around and take a photo with every every one of the fuckers. The only problem with selling things is you got to deal with people like twenty dollars, dude. Like those people, like oh, just well, uh, right. But how many don't fucking people? Don't buy it. How many people are out there buying selling fucking a one fucking side one color fucking shirt for thirty five forty bucks? Like Andrew Dice Clay, so it sells like a fucking <laughs> one color screen. Brings five shirts. Yeah, he 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 actually brings like five shirts and he auctions them off. Oh, I don't, I, don't, yeah. I never no, heard no, no. about that. No, I no, he sells shirts for like five hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing. I'm not like, kidding. Yeah, I, I charge I charge twenty bucks for for whatever, but I sign every last fucking. So I say like, hey, you know, you can have a, a five star New York Times bestseller that's autographed by the author in a picture and, and twenty bucks. I don't feel bad about no, that. No, it's great for a book. You know, a book yeah. for twenty bucks is a great deal. You think about the amount of time it's. It costs, you know, reading yeah. a book, amount of time that you spend being entertained by that book. Uh, Books dude. are like the greatest bargain ever. Yeah, I love Books it, Books take days to read, you know? Yeah, I love that shit, man. But in any case, no, I'm that's so cool. psyched, man, that you have like as much of a reach as you do, man, because I really, we got to fucking get this Paramount Theater in Austin fucking packed, man. I'm gonna like that show is gonna be like that's my that's my showtime. Well, special. you're gonna leave here and your phone is gonna be buzzing off the hook with your manager going, "Did you say you were gonna light the Paramount on fire? <laughs> <laughs> you're lighting people on fire? Like, what are you no, doing? No, no, it's a huge stage and like, dude, there's it's plenty only of one time little... to get out of the room. Don't worry, <laughs> everybody will be alive. Did you, did you see it's that? no there great were, white. There was like 23 people that just died recently uh, at a f fire on stage. Oh and yeah, two, I saw that. It just happened again where two people in the band. Even died where uh, something on stage. Yeah, it was just like Great White. Where? 
uh, was it Sweden or it, something happened? It sparked on the side uh, of the stage and immediately the whole place caught on fire. God God it's a great way. Pyrotechnics. Yeah. Pyrotechnics, dude. It's not worth it. We used to have those in the UFC. We used to have these fucking giant like opening shows. Actually, I don't think we had. Yeah, we did have fire, I believe. But uh, in um, Joel de Oliveira was like this uh, famous fighter from Brazil, and he was fighting in Pride, and they accidentally lit him on fire. And uh, he was on his way to the to the ring, and you know they do the boom when you're walking through like this gateway. They light the fire, and they they fucked up the timing. They lit this fucking dude on fire as he's on his way into the ring and burnt him. And then they said, "Oh, you'll be back. We'll give you more money." <laughs> and so you know he took like a year off, healed up his fucking eighteen degree burns, and uh, came back a year later and fought again. Do you have anything, like, when you go to the doctor, do you have anything that, that bothers you still to this day from, like, a past um, stunt? I know you have, like, a like, BB in your other, nipple, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I, like, I got, like, BBs stuck in my body, but I, that's my choice. Um, <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I mean, it's fake teeth. Choice. And, <laughs> like, like, fake teeth and shitty tattoos is most of it, but, um, like, my esophagus is fucked. What's wrong like, with your esophagus? Tomorrow morning like, the way you're a, talking? This no, is it's, not it's natural? just, like, I have a, what, what you call it, like, a Barrett's esophagus that's, like... You know, like the warning signs for esophageal cancer from just like like acid reflux and I don't know drugs and shitty living and vomiting. Do you are you do you take care of yourself now? Are you yeah, healthy? Yeah, I got. I'm, I'm going in for an endoscopy. No cigarettes. No. I haven't smoked in. You're a vegetarian now, right? Yeah, vegan. You haven't smoked in seven years. Wow. So right when you started getting sober, this. Yeah. Was... Well, I was five months sober when I gave up cigarettes. Oh, okay. And uh, I haven't smoked weed in, since March 9th of 2008. So, um, no coffee. And thanks for not smoking weed for this one. Oh, no but worries, I, man. I appreciate it. No worries. I wouldn't wouldn't want to get you secondhand <laughs> lambasted. <laughs> uh, but all those people keep telling me that's bullshit, but I know it's not. I've hot I just like I, I like I, I don't really give a fuck if people drink around me, but like the weed, because I'm like breathing it in, mm -hmm. and like it's like the problem is it fucking smells great, man. Who doesn't love the smell of weed? You know? It smells great, and it I do believe secondhand smoke gets you high. I don't think it gets you as high as smoking pot, but I think secondhand smoke still affects you. I, I yeah, I don't even want to fuck with it. And so, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Super grateful. So. Um, Oh, no, I'm so about that, vegan, about like the, you're I'm, vegan. Yeah, dude. Like, don't even. There's, there's, there's a whole other fucking like. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a major other door. <laughs> <laughs> what? Which other door? Well, like. Uh, and this, this. I mean, I'm gonna fucking let people see this, you know, at, in Austin or at the Showtime. But it's like, you know, so I could fucking go to rehab and like get sober and the whole deal. And then it's like, all right, well. It's great that I've learned how to live without fucking drugs and alcohol, but like now I'm gonna have to address my sex addiction. <laughs> mm. yeah, you, you used to you have know. a guy that followed around. Oh yeah, around. I still travel yeah. with a professional cock blocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, I mean that was my deal, dude. Like I was like, you know, this is a, it's a mean joke I tell, but you know, I say I'm like I'm fucking 41 now, and I'm looking at like my future, and you know, like. I don't want to be 51 and falling apart and trying to hump everything that moves. I don't want to turn into Polly Shore. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? I mean, if there's a guy. <laughs> right. But, uh, but, I'm sure know. there's a few other guys. Yeah, dude. But you could be me. Lemmy from Motorhead <laughs> yeah. and just fucking ride that boat right into the rocks. Vince Neil. <laughs> Vince Neil. I would go with Lemmy before yeah. I would go with Vince right, Neil. Right, but right. Lemmy but, from Motorhead's like 70. But the thing is, 70. it's like... Right, right. I just like honestly, man. I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, mm -hmm. I, I believe you're married, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, I, I really believe that, like, to be like happy, you know, like it, it's it's important to fucking have a life partner and not run around f trying to fuck everybody and screwing them over, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the deal. Like, I, like well, how can I give so much of a fuck about animals that I won't fucking eat an animal? But I have no respect for women <laughs> at all, you know. Like, it doesn't add up. Like. So, like, on my fucking path, and once I got into the, the meditation, like, I've been doing transcendental meditation for two and a half years now, and, like, I, I couldn't, you know, once I got into that, like, it was just, like, glaring like a fucking flash. 
flashing red light, like, stop fucking screwing over chicks, you know, and, and fucking using them up and throwing them away. And just, like, you know, like, and whatever, if I'm on the road, like, fucking hooking up with all the chicks, it's just, like, it just became clear, like, that's pretty much, like, a path to being fucking miserable. And, and, and it's and, a type of addiction. Yeah, for sure, so because, it's, like, it's like anything else. So, I, like, you know, I, I've made myself, like, a promise. I'm like, okay, from now on, I'm like, I want to fucking learn how to be in a healthy relationship because I feel like that's how I'm going to be happy. And so I'm going to fucking, from here on out, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuck random chicks on the, I'm going to stop trying to get my dick sucked everywhere, you know? And like, but I couldn't do it, man. Like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you have like lines of women at your show. Yeah, yeah. Let's trying to think about you. how funny <laughs> that is. All the stuff you've done but to get out of drugs right, and right. you've gone to rehabs for 30 days. You're like, I could do it, you know, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> 12 days. Well, but the thing I told you, like, I'm, I'm going to walk off the fucking stage. I'm not going to go anywhere and like, take a picture with everybody. Right. So the whole fucking audience basically gets in a line, and it's an audition to see who gets to suck my dick that night. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, That's hilarious. You know? and I mean, so you have a guy there that's... Well, right, I'm all, dude, I fucking did the whole, the whole thing. I mean, I remember, like... And that guy gets his dick sucked. No, because he's, like, he's a well, fucking, he's in the fucking sex program too. Oh, wait, there's a sex program? <laughs> yeah, there's dude. a whole program? <laughs> if you need yeah. somebody to oversee both of you guys. Right. Oh. I mean, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm stoked on it, man, because now I'm like fucking, you know, I'm like, I've gotten therapy, like the whole deal. And which is hilarious because, like, you know, my, my whole story arc, you know, is like, it's, it's pretty epic, you know, to, to go from where I was at to where I'm at now. You know, at the end, I think at the end of the show, I'm going to have to fucking break out my old light bulb trick and fucking slash my shit and bleed everywhere. Oh, no. Just because, just, Let's not do that. Just, just because, like, to fucking, to try to fucking, like, by the end of, like, my fucking show, it's like, okay, so now I'm, like, a fucking vegan and, and you know, like, trying not to get my dick sucked, you know, You're, like, clean and sober, like, fucking healthy eater, you know, meditating. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the least I can do is fucking bleed all over myself after I get you're a, you're a vegan because you love animals that's how I got into it yeah okay but you feed your animals animals uh, I, I do feed my my dogs um, dog food that has fish in it and I just I just adopted a cat so, right uh, and the same thing right you right yeah the they cat, just cat don't food. like the fuck they just don't fucking like vegan dog food I did well, it it's for terrible a while. I did it for a while it's not, like, they don't it's not good for their be, bodies they have to be like like at the point of hunger where like you're willing to eat your own fucking foot <laughs> but isn't that kind of fucked up you know it's like you're choosing the animals that you love you're feeding these animals other animals that were captive yeah, and i mean murdered. if you want to be like super black and white like PETA, then then i guess even, you like know PETA. i mean this the that's the reality of animals Right. I mean, I just like that. Like, I don't know. I mean, I hear that like the and even in my fucking canvas, you know, slip on vans that there's some kind of animal products in mm -hmm. the in the rubber. Right. Yeah. The a lot of rubber. rubber. Like, yeah. like, 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 like I'm not going to not get photographed because there's animal products in the in the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you just can't, you can't do everything a hundred fucking percent, you know, like, uh, I just do the best I can mm -hmm. and I feel better. I feel better for doing it. Yeah, no, it's, it's just the, the animal thing is weird when people are super self-righteous about killing animals right. and yet they have right. pets. For sure. Like I've, I've had a real issue with that with people. Cause hey, I, think I get it's, it, man. It's and a that's blind why, spot. That's why like, I'm like really fucking committed to not trying to tell other people what to do you know no, I, I don't like you like have your whopper man i don't mm -hmm. care like eat all the meat you want i don't give a fuck i'm just happier myself like you know trying to and why why vegan what about like farm fresh eggs or things along those lines where i was fucking with i was fucking yeah, with with fish and eggs mm -hmm. for like a while and i only I only recently went back to being fully vegan mm -hmm. but um you know, it was because I fucking feel tired all the time. And I'm like, man, what is it? I think it's my diet. And I think mm -hmm. if I eat fish and eggs, then all of a sudden I'll have more energy. But Did it didn't it happen. No. no. And then I fucking had a sleep study. It turns out I got sleep apnea. Oh, so, okay. I do too. So it was never my... Do you use a CPAP machine? No, I use a mouthpiece. I, I, see, mouthpiece I, I, I tried that, the CPAP and I can't fucking do it. And so yeah. now I got to get the mouthpiece. I'll, I'll turn you on to a doctor that's, in, Please that's do. local that makes a really good one. It, a lot of um, people that have it, it's your tongue. I have a fat tongue. Yeah, and me I have too, a thick I neck. Think. Yeah. And, 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 and I, was, I went to this uh, physician like, to get cleared for a, a TV show. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was shining the light in the back of my throat. She said, do you feel like you sleep a whole night and wake up and you're still tired? I'm like, yes. 
She says, well, the, the back of your throat's really narrow, and she mm-hmm. thinks, and I think that's going to cause a sleep apnea. Yeah, you, the hole's narrow. Yeah, I have that, too. And also, like, I, they've talked to me about getting an, an operation when they take out your adenoids and your tonsils, and it's pretty intense, and it's, 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 it sucks for, like, a week. But then after it's over, you have a larger hole, and right. that larger hole's better for sleeping. But this right, mouthpiece wonder, like, serves me well. well. Do you still get up to piss as much? Oh, if I have to piss, if I yeah. I try not to drink before I go to bed, like right before right. I go to bed. But if I do, yeah, I piss a lot. Dude. Yeah, do you drink a lot? You need sodium. Like, 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 like lately, I've been trying. I got a fucking big fucking water pitcher next to my bed on the floor, so I just picked up a piss into it and put it back down. My friend Matt Sarah, who's a <laughs> former UFC welterweight champion, when I first met him, he had uh, this gym in Long Island, and he used to sleep in the basement of his gym. He'd just teach and then go downstairs and sleep. And uh, he had this jug right next to. <laughs> Because fighters will drink like gallons of water yeah. in a day. They just drink water all the time to flush their system out. And he would just whip his dick out, <laughs> stick it in the hole. He go, he, he go with his accent. He goes, I didn't even get out of bed. I would turn sideways, yeah. put my dick in the hole, yeah. piss, <laughs> pull it out, put the jug down. Right back to sleep. Oh, dude, it's so great, man. This one like water pitcher, like I don't have a very big dick or anything, but like I don't even really have to like tip over, man, because like it's got like a uh, little spout thing. It's like one of those classic Kool Aid fucking <laughs> like <laughs> the Kool Aid when Kool Aid breaks through the wall. Yeah, yeah. like fucking it's, it's like the Kool Aid kind. So wow. I just fucking flop my dick. On and I'm good to go. So when you got a sleep study, they put all the electrodes on you yeah. and all that jazz. Uh-huh, yeah, for and sure. how many times did you uh, wake up in an hour? They said that it was actually like mild to moderate. Mm-hmm. But uh, but still, man, I noticed it, dude. I'm fucking. I gotta get that fucking mouthpiece. Yeah, man. it's not. Well, you should lose weight. I need losing to weight sure. is the big one. I think right. it's like with Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz uses the CPAP machine, but he didn't used to have to have that. It's like when he got really big. That's when he really developed. Because the, the more fat you have, it's it all closes everything off. You know, right. when you see people with giant jowls, well, guess what? That fat's everywhere. It's inside your face. It's inside right. your neck, and all that fat will close off the hole. And when you lay back and your tongue falls over that hole, there's no air. and just Right. I had to wake a guy up, man. I was on a plane. This fucking guy was not breathing for like minutes at a time. And then and then gacking and coughing. And then I didn't wake him up, but I talked to him when he woke up. And I said, hey, man, have you ever gotten checked for sleep apnea? Because he was, he was snoring the most ungodly snore. That's so funny, man. It's but it like, wasn't like, like you always said I had to wake snore. him up. I'm thinking you're saying, motherfucker, wake up. No, 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 Stop no, no, snoring. No, no, no. He's like no. all like caring about the guy. No. It's like when he said, like, uh, I'm thinking, like, man, I'm going to get sued. Like, you're not worried about the kid that's got spiked on his head? You're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be. But this, this poor guy was freaking me out because uh, he was making these noises. Like, <laughs> And then he would go back to like, and then it would be nothing, no sound. And uh, I'm, I'm awake because I was writing and it was on a long flight. And I looked over at this guy and I'm noticing he's, he's very overweight and he's just lying there like this. No movement, no breathing, no, no movement at all in his chest. And all of a sudden, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Like, I mean, he would go, I mean, I'm exaggerating by saying minutes, but he would definitely go 40 wow. seconds. Like, I timed it. I forget what the time was, but I remember being alarmed. And I remember sitting up going, okay, I got to talk to this guy. And I had my mouthpiece with me because I, I bring it in my bag. It moves your lower jaw forward? No, 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 no. Mine doesn't. Mine actually just depresses my tongue down. Wow. And it keeps my tongue from falling back over my air hole. <clears throat> it depends on what kind of sleep apnea you have. But I have the, I have the central one, I think they said. Mm, I don't know what's the difference. I don't know. I don't I don't know. Joey would know more than anyone because Joey's got it real bad. Joey needs the, the CPAP. Like, he has to have air blow in Where's his hole. Where's Joey at, man? I love that guy. <clears throat> I love him, too. He's probably smoking weed right now on Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so I, I the guy was, like, kind of stirring and moving. And when he finally was, like, opening his eyes and looking around, I talked to him. And I had like a long sit down with him and I showed him the mouthpiece and I go, dude, you could die. I go, you, you hold your, I was going to film it, but I thought that would be rude to just (laughs) film you. But I mean, you're holding your breath for a long time. Have you ever talked to anyone about it? He's like, no, you know, my wife tells me I snore. I go, dude, you don't just snore. You're like choking to death, (laughs) you know? And there's a lot of people that you don't know what happens when you go to sleep. You're out and you sleep, you're out. And when you're out like that, you're not getting any oxygen. When you sleep, you don't get into heavy REM sleep. You go and get into those deep cycles. You just skirt the edges, and then you wake up because your body's gasping in panic mode. And so you wake up after like eight hours of sleep, and you're still fucking exhausted. That's, 
every day I feel like I could go back to bed right when I wake up. Dude, you, <laughs> you really should lose weight. I mean, you know that's a big, yeah. that's, and so this, should man. Joey. Joey, I mean, that's a big thing with Joey. He's way, way, way overweight. Yeah. And he got down a while just like you did. I mean, Joey lost like 80 fucking pounds at one point. But um, he's he gets energy from that CPAP. Like, he feels way better. Like, he travels with one. He has this machine that he travels with that he has to check. I mean, so he always has to check his luggage because his carry-on is his CPAP machine. So he doesn't go anywhere without checking his luggage. Every flight he takes, Joey brings that machine with him. That is his fucking, that's his security system. You brought up earlier, you brought up Greg Fitzsimmons uh, yeah, that and that Cosby Bill thing. Cosby thing. What do you think about Because I, 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 it makes me feel weird. I, <laughs> I don't like it. It's misguided. I love Greg, but I think it's misguided. And for folks who don't know what we're talking about, uh, Greg has decided to start stealing Bill Cosby's material and uh, doing it openly. So he does these classic Bill Cosby bits, and then he... Um, lets everybody know in the middle of it that he's stealing Bill Cosby's bits to take away from him what is most precious. But it doesn't really work because it doesn't, you don't, like, if someone tries to steal some shit off of, like, Shiny Happy Jihad or something like that, like, it's already out, it's already on CD. I, I did it in, you know, fucking 2006. Like, if you're stealing, you're not taking anything away <coughs> from me. You're just, you're just, you know, you're just selling yourself short by stealing. So, like, if Greg does Bill Cosby's material, you don't ever take it away from him. It's already recorded. These are, like, he doesn't even do that material anymore. So, I don't know. I don't think it's really it's, effective. It, it seems like you're taking something negative and being negative about it. It just doesn't seem... It, and I also think it just opens the door to people go, well, Greg stole Bill Cosby's jokes, you know, and... Uh, but he says it on stage that yeah. he's stealing it. He lets people know in the middle of it that he's stealing Bill Cosby's... But Greg Fitzsimmons stealing Bill Cosby's bits now he do, he's doing it on purpose to try to take something from Bill Cosby like this is the idea behind it I think it's what well, it sounds like Bill Cosby would be super psyched on that because it's like wow I'm getting credit for being funny and it's distracting people from me being a racist <laughs> 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 like wow like there's actually that's something totally good about true. Bill Cosby like, that's so totally true that's completely defeating yeah I think it's a gimmick I mean I, I, I see what he's like he's ge genuinely thinks the guy's disgusting right he's, he, it's genuine so, so let me like like glorify his comedy but yeah i, don't I get mean it. i don't get it either i don't get it. i don't i don't I, I just i don't know maybe if i had him on and greg i'll have him on soon and he's gonna be on soon i guess we're, we're talking about doing something within the next couple of weeks so maybe uh, he'll explain it better i just I, don't know. I wouldn't want to have anything to do with it you know you know, I'd yeah. say this is a fascinating. There's a, some lady that was on um, who was a legal expert who was discussing it, and she said he might be the most prolific serial rapist in history, which is fucking insane. It's insane to look at it that way. That this guy, Mr. Huxtable, you know, <laughs> the fucking guy from the TV show, the guy who had the squeaky clean comedy. The guy who did the bit about, you know, the football player saying, hi, mom, to his son on TV. This guy was like wholesome Mr. America in a sweater. But did, so none of these girls like the next morning go, God, what the fuck happened? He raped me. I am going to, to the police. This is all, you know, kind of like wishy-washy. Like, yeah, I, I, I kind of felt weird that night. But no one really went right to the police, though, did they? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems weird. It just seems like if it doesn't just, seem weird to me. It seems like a lot of people just all <clears throat> kind of, I don't know. Well, listen, man, if you're a girl, okay, look at it this way. You're some young girl who's trying to make it in show business and you're, you know, you get brought into his office because, you know, his, you know, he knows your parents or something like that. That was a lot of the situation. Like he, there was one of one situation was there was like a modeling company and he would contact the modeling company to get people on his show like he was looking to cast roles that didn't even exist and he'd have them <laughs> the, in his the office only and guy drug them and do fuck his own them. casting <laughs> casting yeah i mean caps. he would bring them into his office and drug them like would right. you like a cappuccino would you like a little cappuccino and give him a cappuccino and fuck him i mean just drug him i don't know it seems think, like if that were to happen though like four hours later this girl's going like i just went there for an interview i had a cappuccino and it, he fucked me like you'd go right to the no this is why this is why no because i think 
for what I was gonna say is like these these are young girls that are probably completely overwhelmed that they're even in his presence. Like they can't even believe that they're meeting Bill Cosby. So you're insanely starstruck. Then the fact that he's touching you puts you into a state of shock. Like you're fucked up. And then you're confused because you wake up and you you were drugged. You don't know what happened. And then you're embarrassed and horrified of it. I mean. There's so many, and then, and then you're going to try so and accuse power. Mr. Huxtable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like he's. This is before the internet, man. You know, if a girl like that, if that happened today, a girl could go on her Facebook page and say, "Today, I went on an audition with Bill Cosby, and he drugged me and raped me." And like, whoa, like, bam, that takes off and it goes viral. But back then, man, if you go to the fucking police, they might not say shit, or might, they might go to Cosby, and Cosby might sue you. But you got to realize some women did, and in 2005, he actually paid off women, and he. That's why this all got more serious lately is because they released the transcripts and the transcripts said that he admitted that he had drugged these girls right he admitted it so this this did go to cops and it didn't go out to the public Mm. so it's like it's not kind of weird it's just the amount of power and money this guy i mean bill cosby is like a billionaire I mean, the amount of money that guy has is insane. And the amount of power that kind of money has, where you're talking about just teams of lawyers that just try to figure out any sort of attack that they could do to try to mitigate any of the issues that are going on with people accusing him of all this crazy, you know, rape shit. It's like he he he, he fought it for a long time. As he hasn't really publicly denied any of it, no. right? Or- no, he hasn't denied it at all. He hasn't denied it at all. He just doesn't talk about it. You know, right. he, one of the weirdest things that he said, he did this one interview and he said, in all my years of show business, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. Well, that's called free speech. This is what's going on now. Like you, you, everyone can talk now. Like now people can get online and talk about crimes that you committed. It's like you can't hide behind lawyers anymore. You can't threaten them. You know, you can't, you, you, when you're a girl, you're barely paying your bills, you know, you're barely getting by and he offers you $20,000 or a hundred thousand dollars to shut the fuck up and you have to sign some written agreement that says you never speak about this again. You take that money. That's what they do. And that's what they did in 2005. And I don't know how much they got paid, but it's probably even more than that. Probably a million. I mean, when you, when you're worth what that guy's made in his career, I mean, who knows what he's got left, but when someone... A hundred thousand here, a hundred thousand there for a guy like that is nothing. He could silence a lot of shit by just keeping people quiet with money, you know, and that's probably what happened when things came up. I mean, I don't know. And then there's also people fe- with fear of being blackballed. You know, being blackballed from show business when you're a struggling actress and you're barely getting by, the difference between Bill Cosby talking badly about you and accusing you of being a liar, like who's going to listen to you and who's going to listen to him? They, they got to think that most people are going to listen to Bill Cosby, and that could wreck your career before it ever gets started. Just sink your ship. And it seems like a lot of these girls that he preyed on were trying to make it in show business. That was a big part of like what he would attack. He would go after these girls that were trying to become actresses, and he was like a mentor figure. That was like the angle that he was presenting. It's dark shit, man. Yeah, how'd we get on that? I take one piss, man. Next thing you know. <laughs> oh, we're talking about Greg, Greg Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons. Uh, Greg Fitzsimmons and his Bill Cosby uh, strategy. Just, yeah, I don't it's know. It's kind of weird. It's a little misguided, I think. I don't know. I mean, maybe Greg's got a better point. Maybe we need to let him uh, articulate it. It's the darkest thing in all of the history of stand-up comedy, I think. I mean, or, or close to it. You know, I mean, what else? There was that Vince Champ guy that was raping college girls and he got caught. He would say, like, horrible shit to them, like, pray for me and stuff, like, while he's fucking them. That guy's in jail for the rest of his life. Cosby's just out running around. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any charges that are being put up against him. And as far as I know, there's only one woman that the, the rape happened inside the Statue of Limitations. I don't know what the Statue of Limitations is, but I think it's like six seven, or seven, seven years. years. That's it? That seems fucked. I think for it's, rape? I think it's seven years, but that's kind of like, well, you know, it's a little wishy-washy. Meaning, like, if you if you rape somebody and you have great proof eight years later, I'm sure they're still going to use it. I don't I know. It's... I don't think that's the case. I think a statute of limitations is pretty rock solid. Like once, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like double jeopardy and shit. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's law. 
you know i don't know it's fucked up we've talked about that so many times it's a it's a subject that's been beaten to death but if it seems like it's so significant that you kind of have to beat it to death because it's hard to believe imagine if that was like your dad or something like that imagine you know if you found out your dad was a fucking serial rapist or your mom even your mom's drugging dudes sucking their dicks <laughs> taking pictures that was taking like, selfies. I, I, I remember an old bit <laughs> i saw i saw you do about if your son came home from school and told told you that his teacher sucked his dick how pissed you would be <laughs> don't you ever ruin that <laughs> <laughs> well that, no it's that he called the cops Right, That's right, who right. it was. Right. My son called the, called the police because uh, <laughs> the teacher like, was sucking. How does someone ever find out that a female teacher molests a kid? One of those pussies has to open his mouth. <laughs> like, where was his dad? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> if my son did that, I would, <laughs> I would be pissed. To be like, dude, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. It's just there's a giant difference between a woman molesting a boy uh, and a man molesting a girl. I mean, I, I don't think it should be encouraged. But it's certainly not the same. Right. Did you hear uh, about Anonymous uh, releasing all the KKK members' uh, information? Good. And supposedly there's a lot of U.S. senators, Good. police. Good. Uh, yeah. I applaud you, Anonymous. Yeah. I feel like Anonymous <laughs> overall across the board does more good shit. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I hear very, very few bad accusations on their part. Almost everything they do, I agree with. I love it. Mm -hmm. Like it. Good. Fuck the KKK. Mm -hmm. Fuck all those crazy fucking Stone Age assholes who give a shit about the origin of birth of your great 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 grandparents. You know, you're not pure. You're not of the pure race. It's going to be interesting, though, because supposedly there's some Ferguson police that are involved in this. Uh, <sighs> and it, the whole list uh, officially gets released, and I think next week or this Good. week. Meanwhile, Brian's on it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they could just put your name on it, man. If somebody wanted to fuck with you, Steve O's in the KKK. What? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you, you've you've kind of morphed. It's really fascinating. I mean, seeing you go from being this wild, crazy, ketamine snorting psychopath, jumping off roofs and shit, and damaging your body, to being this vegan who's trying to live a kind life and trying to be nice to people, and you don't want to randomly hook up with girls because you want to have a meaningful relationship right, and man. you're taking care of animals and fuck SeaWorld. It's really <laughs> amazing to well, see thanks, you uh, become this. Yeah, you know, I mean, every once in a while I got to do something pretty fucked up just to make sure that I'm, <laughs> I'm not a total real. pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't meet you until you were sober. Right. You know, I, I missed the crazy train. Mm -hmm. I've kept it pretty crazy sober, too, though. Yeah, oh, you know? no, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, just ex explaining what you're planning on doing at the Paramount <laughs> before they found out about it. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be a Jackass, Jackass 4K or something like that? I don't think so, man, but... Um, Everybody's I, getting old and her, fucking injuries. The last one was so great. I, I'm, I, working, I'm working my dick off to get my own movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like... Uh, Sort of, sort of like the Bad Grandpa format, but instead of... Oh, my of, God, was Bad Grandpa good. Oh, yeah. That was a funny, funny fucking yeah. movie. I cried when he got his dick stuck in that machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was one of the funny... That was a funny fucking movie that it I don't really think... really good. I don't think it got enough credit. I really don't think it I got mean, as much credit as it deserved. I think it did well. It was number one. But it's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. And when you talk about like funny all-time movies, very few people bring up Bad Grandpa. I think they should. I think it's a goddamn epic movie. This kid shitting on the wall, and when he's dancing, oh, he's pretty funny. That kid's awesome. I love the kid in there. When when he goes to the the black club and he's uh he's with with all the ladies and he's dancing. Come on. Fuck yeah, dude. It's a fucking epic movie. Yeah. So do you have a movie worked out, or do you have an idea? Pretty much, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like uh, keep the cards close fucking, to your chest. Yeah, dude. But, um, but I got to deal with, uh, you know, big time movie producer guys. Oh so. snap! Yeah. So now we're like uh, taking it and like getting it written and get the director and then take it to the studios, kind of a deal. So we were talking about this, the the so damage early, that you've it's done. It's early the fuck on, but. We were talking about the damage yeah. you've done to your body before you went off to pee, and you mm -hmm. said esophageal, you like you said, yeah, I had esophageal what's called issues. Barrett's, Barrett's esophagus. So I had but that's it. Other than that, like pretty much, bones yeah. and joints and mm -hmm. back and yeah, neck. Yeah, joints are all good. That's crazy. What about Knoxville? Is he okay? 
He's um, got some back issues, I think. Is that from that bull? <clears throat> Uh, which bull? <laughs> <laughs> the bull who, when he went blindfold and the bull right, launched right. into that the air? Right, right. That wasn't a bull. That was a yak. But, uh, oh. That was <laughs> but a yak? That, I don't think that he got particularly hurt on that. I think that one thing <laughs> one thing that uh, did a lot of damage to him was early, early on uh, dropping in on the skateboard half pipe, like the, one of the big vert ramps. Mm -hmm. And he just like, I mean, just fell straight to the flat bottom and... Like, I remember, like, hearing that, like, you know, he turns his, like, turning the car, like, hurts. <laughs> you know, I don't oh, know. His, his shoulder's fucked he up. He definitely did more damage because, like, he he didn't have, like, the benefit of growing up, like, falling off a skateboard, sort of learning how to fall down. Like, you know, like, when, when he, like, you know, a lot of us are, are like, sort of, you know, I mean, I, I'm, like, you know, sort of circus clown, acrobat, you know. Lifelong fuck by, up. By trade, so. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm kind of more like, like uh, I'm better at falling down without getting hurt. Knoxville right. like falls down, and it's just me hitting the ground in the worst way, which is why his shit's always the best, you know. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Because like, you can do flips and all that shit. Right. And you know yeah. how to fall with your I, body. Yeah, I'm I'm more like a cat when it gets yeah. down to it. And Knoxville is just, it, it, you know. So I think that he he's probably in in worse shape. But then again, at the same time, I think that. Uh, you know, he he takes good care of himself. He, you know, I think maybe he's he's done some mending. He had some disc issues. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I've had a gang of those. I did um, my own stunts for this. Accidentally did my own stunts for this Kevin James movie I was in because I, I suck at riding bikes. I had to ride a bike and I had hit him with a flag. Which Kevin James movie? It was uh, Zookeeper. And I was okay. Yeah, I the was, guy the guy that I'm telling you about is the one who did that movie. Which guy? Todd Garner. Oh, the guy who, the producer? I know Todd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good dude. I love Todd. Um, so I, I had to hit the brake while I was, I was like riding a bike and I was hitting him with this flag, but I'm hitting the front brake. And when you, you know, you hit the front brake, if it locks, you go flying over the top. Mm -hmm. And I, I did it like three times. I just <laughs> we wind up using that in the movie instead of the stuntman because I just would go fucking flying. <laughs> but I'm pretty good at falling. It was a lifelong you know, martial artists, so all the, like, the, I, I knew when I hit the ground that you can't just hit the right. ground, you gotta kinda like roll with it. Sure. But uh, you really have a, a real strong appreciation for stunt people when you do something like that. Because I go, well, I got through this, luckily, without getting hurt, but if I had to do this every fucking day, or, you know, every week, some new thing where you're falling off of a building or jumping off of a fucking moving car, like, the potential for damaging yourself is super high. And you hear about those people dying. It's always like some movie that no one's going to give a fuck about. Some <laughs> racing motorcycle scene, a Steven Seagal movie, and someone dies. You know? I mean, you got to... When you watch those crazy action movies, think about that. Appreciate the fact that those people, they literally put their physical health and their life on the line for your entertainment. You know, I didn't think about it too much until I d just fucked up and fell a few times on a bike in a movie, you know? It's like, those guys do it on purpose all the time. Yep. That's right, man. It's fucking hard gig, man. That's a hard gig. And I'm gonna do gig. it on purpose at the fucking Paramount Theater. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna see this now, I wanna be there. Yeah, dude. Go, why don't you go? I mean, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Fucking you know, like, No one's holding you back. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap this bitch up. Steve O, Steve O on Twitter, um, Paramount Theater, November twenty first, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Uh, I will be in uh, Denver at that time. I'm at the Belco Theater on November twenty first with the great Ian Edwards, and then um, the twentieth. Ah, Ian Edwards, epic. I'm uh, in Madison, Wisconsin on the twentieth. Uh, all that shit is on uh, my website, JoeRogan.net, in the tour section. Brian, what do you got going on? Uh, Wednesday, we're at the Comedy Store, me and you. Oh, that's uh, right. Chris D'Elia, oh, we have that's a show, right. uh, secret show. And also, me and, and Tony Hinchcliffe. And some secret, uh, secret guests. Yeah, some secret guests. One that would be really cool. rhymes with Bosch. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> uh, uh, and also, me and Tony are bringing Kill Tony to Pittsburgh in Ohio Thanksgiving week. Uh, it's uh, November 27th. We'll be in Pittsburgh. And November 29th in Ohio, go to DeathSquad.tv. Click on tour dates. Yeehaw! All right, you fucks. Uh, I got a podcast in one hour with Chris Ryan. So I'll See you then. Bye-bye. Big kiss. Yeah, dude. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, bro.